All right. So. <clears throat> a little bit. All right, uh, well, it's Thursday afternoon. Uh, it means it's time for some more Soul Herder. Uh, I decided this week that I'm just going to play Soul Herder on my streams for the foreseeable future uh, until until they print some interesting stuff for merfolk or the format changes or something because uh just not super excited about playing merfolk these days i think i touched on it briefly uh in the last stream but you know modern is kind of what it is you know <laughs> a lot of people would say it's a little bit broken uh you got super aggro crazy combo um and a whole just a whole bunch of kind of like busted cards uh field of the dead in primeval titan decks and other sort of control decks with uro and teferi and um i just haven't found it to be super fun with merfolk lately um not not just because of the format but because Maybe maybe it's like I'm distracted uh, because I know that there's this super interesting developmental deck uh, with Soul Herder that um, still needs so much work to be put in to sort of discover um, how to play it the best. You know, what cards are optimal and how it sort of wants to play uh, in, the, in the metagame. You know, there's so many different approaches, as you guys know, uh, between Vile, No Vile, Call... Neoform, Court of Calling, uh, or just none of them, uh, right? You can just just play a lot of creatures. Um, how many Uros? How many Teferis? Some people don't even main deck Stonehorn Dignitary, which seems kind of crazy to me. Uh, anyhow, obviously, lots of different ways to play this deck. Uh, it's extremely fresh and um, experimental. And so I just find myself drawn towards playing this rather than Merfolk. So uh, Monday night, uh, Thursday afternoon, that's right now, uh gonna be streaming soul herder uh for at least at least the next few weeks uh until like <laughs> unlike in, in the unlikely event that wizards actually print some playable merfolk um i'm gonna be sticking with soul herder for a little while so uh once again welcome uh this is the list here recent changes well first of all you should be able to see the list off to the side um with cardboard live i, I just updated it so it should be accurate uh, recent, rec sorry, excuse me, recent changes to the deck. Um, not too many, uh, not too many. Um, I think it was earlier this week I went down one to fairy and up uh, up to a second Uro. I I've played with two Uros a lot in the past. Uh, I think the metagame shifted slightly away from kind of aggro for a little while, and so I went down to one Uro. But now, you know, we have these Red Black Shadow decks, uh, also just seeing a lot of Shadow in general, uh, and mid-range, and Uro just kind of is like a massive house against all those decks, so um, I, I've felt great going back up to two Uros. Uh, Teferi's still very, very good, uh, probably the card that deserves a ban the most in the format, just because of how much everybody hates it, um, but I've still got one in the main deck. Uh, on two Skyclaves, I think I started with one, I went up to two, and am, have been very, very happy with it at two. Uh, I played a match against Lantern Control last night, and in the past, Lantern Control has just been always miserable. Like, if you, if you, even if you win, it tends to be a miserable experience. Uh, but I feel like my setup here is just, like, so dominant uh, against Lantern that it was actually, it was actually pretty fun. Um, like, whether we just draw Skyclaves, or we draw a Knight of Autumn, or we draw any of our four Eladomri's calls... Uh, we're very capable of just blowing up all their stupid artifacts. And uh, yeah, that's what I did last night, and it felt pretty awesome. Um, so the most recent change uh, was at the very end of the last stream, and uh, somebody suggested, uh, or rather somebody asked whether I had tried out Glasspool Mimic at all, and I had not. And um, I definitely heard a bunch of people talking about Glasspool Mimic on the Discord, and yeah, I just hadn't gotten around to trying it yet. So uh, I do have uh, the single glass pool mimic in here. Um, like the other singletons in the deck, um, I expect it to come up, you know, sort of randomly uh, 
in random matches just uh because it's a singleton right you can't you have no real control over when you draw it uh but uh we can grab it with eladomri's call so there's going to be situations where maybe there's two eternal witnesses in the graveyard and i have got the one of them on the battlefield uh but i I don't have any ephemerates, I don't have any any blink effects, and I need something from the graveyard. Um, I can call for glass pool mimic, violin, glass pool mimic, copy eternal witness, get something from the graveyard. Um Yeah, it just doubles up on our singletons, Soul Herder, Deputy, um, Stonehorn, Eternal Witness. Um and yeah, in a pinch it can be blue mana and actually turns Eladomri's call into a sort of fetch because End step, you can cast Eladomri's Call if you're really uh, in dire need of blue mana. Say that you've only got one blue mana and you really want to escape Uro. Uh, cast Eladomri's Call, go find Glasspool Mimic. Just play it as a land. Uh, it's super slow because it enters tapped, but then, you know, next turn you're going to be able to escape Uro no matter what. So, uh, welcome to the stream, everybody. Uh, I see some people are um, sort of trickling in here. Uh, mistaken 69 do you see the list with mangara i i've not seen a list with mangara no um mangara is is super duper slow um but but i can see it i can see it like so i know the idea is you you uh, activate mangara and then if you can blink mangara like with traditionally like violing in like a flicker wisp or something um mangara the, I think the ability resolves and tries to exile Mangara and the target, but because Mangara is no longer on the battlefield in his original state, that it only exiles the opponent's thing. Um, so repeatable, tappable exiling effects. Um, so that's that's a uh, it's pretty spicy. Um, and honestly, I don't think I've heard anybody talking about Mangara in Soul Herder. Um, it doesn't really work with. It doesn't really work with our slow blink like Soul Herder and Thassa, but it definitely works with Ephemerate. Um, but, you know, we just got Skyclave, which sort of like Mangara. Um, why don't I bring that card up since maybe everybody listening might not be uh, familiar with it. Let me change my quantity. Okay, so here we are. Mangara of uh, Kurandor. To exile Mangara of Karandor and target permanent, right? So you activate that, target whatever permanent, like Karn or Ugin, like even big things that uh, that Skyclave Apparition can't hit. And then you blink uh, Mangara and and only the permanent will get exiled. So, um, And then I guess next turn you can just repeat it, right? Because you'll have summoning sickness after the blink, but then when it's your turn again, you know, all of a sudden you have just this tappable uh ex repeatable sort of exile effect so i can i can definitely see the strength of it but honestly yeah it's just interesting i've never really heard it brought up uh in the context of soul herder uh to snuffle guy uh thanks thanks for joining me and uh thanks for the good luck uh so anyhow no was there uh was there a list uh mistaken 69 that that 5 would or something with mangara or or did well in in an event because i'd love to see the list um yeah, no, it seems seems pretty cool. I've been loving Skyclave and the way that it works with Ephemerate. Yesterday against, and I can probably just pull up a screenshot here real quick. Um, yesterday against humans, I got a, a cool board state where um, they, um, let's see, they untapped with five mana and they cast a Mantis Rider and then copied it with Phantasmal Image. Uh, normally a pretty backbreaking sort of combo uh for our kind of dirtily deck um like imagine that skyclave was like a knight of autumn or something in an older iteration uh here now i can ephemerate the skyclave target the real mantis rider and then with that ability still on the stack i can ephemerate again use the second trigger um to target and just immediately blow up the phantasmal image because that dies when it's targeted uh and then, uh, as you guys know, if you ephemerate with the first ability still on the stack, uh, the first ability, when it resolves, uh, will not actually... Um, sorry, my brain is not... Uh, <laughs> they'll ne they're never going to get a token for, for that first creature that's going to get resolved. So with two ephemerates in hand, I was able to exile both of these Mantis Riders without um, risking future 3-3 tokens at all. 
Uh, the opponent did did get a 3-3 token from the um, general Kudro that was underneath this, the, uh, the Skyclave Apparition. Uh, but basically, uh, with the two Ephemerates, it, it works really, really well uh, when you've got uh, Phantasmal Image as one of the targets because it just gets blown up. Anyhow, um, that's just... Uh, it, one situation where Mangara wouldn't be as good, right? Because Mangara would, uh, you could tap and just blow up one of the Mantis Riders, but the other one's going to get in, like Ephemerate. Um, you'd have to blink the Mangara to not lose it, but then you'd take damage from one, you'd have to untap and do it again. Um, so I'd still, I'd love to see the list, but I'm skeptical that Mangara would be more uh, impactful than Skyclave Apparition. But that's awesome that people are testing uh, lesser-known cards. I, I don't even know if you can call Mangara a lesser-known card because uh, I think it's it's just really old tech in like death and taxes lists, like really really old. Like when I started getting back into Magic, I mean, it must be like eight or nine years ago at this point. Um, like one of my friends on Death and Taxes was like super stoked on this Mangara uh, idea, being able to sort of violin flicker wisp or whatever, uh, and just like repeatedly. Or what was it? I can't remember what the con what what piece he was using to blink Mangara, but uh, it, it was a while ago. All right, so uh, yeah, recent changes: uh, one more Uro, one less to Fairy, uh, one more Glasspool Mimic. Uh, well, one Glasspool Mimic and one fewer snow-covered planes. Everything else should be the same as last week in the main deck. Uh, I'm still on uh, an additional Ceremonious Rejection. Um, I forget, I moved things around a little bit. I had gone down one Ashiok, uh, but I really liked Ashiok. Oh, I, I, I got rid of the um, Avon Mind Sensor. It just didn't feel like it was doing enough. Uh, Avon Mind Sensor, kind of like Ashiok in a way. They both uh, hurt the opponent's ability to search their library. Um, obviously Ashiok a bit more of a hard um, hard counter to the opponent searching their libraries. It just says they can't. Whereas Avon Mind Sensor lets them search the top four, so they still have a chance of finding what they want to find. Um, but obviously um, Avon Mind Sensor uh, better with Eladomri's call because you can actually go and search for it. So. If you bring in the Mind Sensor, you've got effectively five copies of it if you have all four calls in. Uh, but I still just didn't find myself uh, calling for Avon Mind Sensor that often. It's possible that I just don't really know how to use the card that well. There's definitely cards in Modern, um, in the card pool that I would consider playable in this deck that I'm, I'm less familiar with than maybe I could be or should be. Or certainly less familiar with these cards than, than, many, than many pilots are. Like Aether Gust is a great example. Um... You know, at first glance, it kind of just looks like a weird, narrow uh, tempo spell. But there are situations uh, where it's actually just like a, a removal spell, and a really flexible removal spell because it can get rid of things like um, Clothis. Got him, like, <laughs> is, that, is that the three-drop uh, enchantment god, or is that something else? I'm just like, <laughs> it can get rid of hard-to-remove stuff. Um, if an opponent cracks a fetch land and they're going to shuffle their library, uh, you cast Aether Gust, and then it doesn't matter if they put it on the top or the bottom, they're going to shuffle their library. Uh, Field of Ruin is another shuffle effect, and that one's actually kind of a mandatory shuffle effect. Uh, Path to Exile, another shuffle effect. It's not mandatory, but if they want to get that land, um, they're going to shuffle their library. So uh, I, how does that work? I guess we cast Path. Um, see, this is I'm just talking through my inexperience here. Uh, we cast Path on, like, I don't know, um, a Glorybringer or something. And then we Aether Gust, uh, another permanent on top of the, the Path to Exile, right? Or you just cast the, cast the Aether Gust, let them put their thing on the top, and then cast Path to Exile. Now, if they want that basic land, they have to shuffle their library. Something a lot of people don't realize, I think, is, like, people don't remember. Like, when people scry, and then you cast Path to Exile, you know? Um, a lot of times they don't need the land, but they're just like, oh, it's free land. I'm going to go get it. But then they're like, oh, I messed up my scry, you know? Um, same thing with Aether Gust. I think they'll put the card on top of their deck and then go and get a land from Path to Exile. And then remember, when they go to draw next turn, they're like, all right, I'm going to get my Clothis again or whatever. And they remember that they shuffled their deck. So, um, All right, so without further ado, unless there are any questions about the deck list, uh, again, you can see it over on the side with Cardboard Live. I'm just going to jump into a league. 
So I played against um, Lantern, as I mentioned last night, and also Humans, and both of them, um, I won both of them. Lantern felt like a complete buy. It was pretty awesome. And Humans, I had to fight for it a little bit. Um, they had pretty crazy draws. Like, I, I had the um, Stonehorn Soul Herder lock, but they kept drawing Reflector Mages and, um, and Phantasmal Images. So I had to keep drawing ways to sort of slow down their attacks and not die before I could redeploy my creatures. But I, I got there. So humans, humans feel slightly positive for us, maybe 55, 45. Um, I'd say Amulet is, is, sorry, not Amulet. Did I say Amulet? I meant to say Lantern. I think I said Lantern. Uh, Lantern, you know, you don't see it very often, so it's, it hasn't been a matchup that I've had to analyze. Um, but now that I've played it a couple times with this deck, it feels like one of our best matchups. It's like, we just have lots of ways to blow up their, their Lanterns, their Ensnaring Bridges between Night of Autumn and Skyclave Apparition, even with Teferi bouncing uh, a bridge. Like, we have lots of ways to interact. We have counter spells. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, it's quite a good matchup for us. Uh, so Walking Ballista, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, like, Walking Ballista is not that big of a deal. Um, it's super situational, like, often we'll have a situ like, a spot where, uh, the opponent kind of needs to just use all of their Walking Ballista counters right away, like, if we have a Soul Herder, uh, they'll need to just use Walking Ballista as a removal spell. If you're super concerned with Walking Ballista, um, that's an awesome hand, and I won the die roll, you could, uh, I've run, um, I have run in the past uh, a couple of pithing needles in the sideboard to great effect, actually very recently. And um, you can't search for it, I like, I, but I still really, really prefer pithing needle over um, things like Phyrexian Revoker because um, Phyrexian Revoker is so easy to kill. Um, Phyrexian Revoker probably gets uh, the edge against like um, Devoted Druid, which doesn't really exist in the format right now, just because they don't have a lot of removal. But against many decks, Pithing Needle is going to be the smarter choice. But again, I haven't been losing tons and tons of games to... Um... That was a great draw there, that land. Um... I think I'm just going to continue with my plan here. Uh, well, just pl just playing my game, um, which is to say I'm going to go for the Oracle. Don't know exactly what the opponent's on here yet, but um, probably probably some kind of uh, rule deck. So what do I want to get? Um, you know, blue white, I guess, take some damage. Uh, but Blood Moon would get me. Blood Moon would get me. So why don't I err on the side of caution here and just get a basic island? I do have an Ether Vial. Um, but I don't want to get got by Blood Moon. I mean, if they play Blood Moon right now, I, I can play the second Ether Vial. It's not a big deal. But you do have to sort of think about potential blowouts. Um, so I think I am going to pay the life for this. And I am going to play this extra vial. Now, um, it's a, if it is Gruul, it's a pretty aggressive deck. Uh, and I've just hit myself for six damage. But um, we're, we're on the play. So we're, we're, we should be the, uh, the one on the front foot. So let's take advantage of um, our, our tempo lead. All right, so are we going to see Blood Moon? Or just like a, a Blood Braid cascading into Blood Moon? Man, play this game too much. So unfortunately, that turns off our call. Um, Ah, but Glass Pool is a, is a pretty cool draw. Um, I can actually cast that right now. It seems pretty good. I'm going to just copy my uh, Coiling Oracle, I think.
All right, so that's a nice value. So we have, uh, well, we can't cast that just yet. Um, we have one more island, two basic forests, and one, um, one basic plains in the deck. Um, opponent knows I have the force, so they might choose to go with a creature instead of uh, a non-creature. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Gargaroth, well, we have lots of paths. Uh, that does not die to Skyclave Apparition. So opponent um, drawing some good cards at the start of this game. You know, I was on the play. I didn't know um, what I was playing against, so I went and got a Shock, which is correct in 90% of situations. Ugh, okay. Um, so this thing is going to get to, uh, well, generate a bunch of value. I can um, certainly chump with one of these snakes uh, and then Eternal Witness, get it back, file it in. Um, I'll let you chump lock with the one that I can actually... Um, it will just be a snake, so this one. But otherwise, I can't really do anything here. So uh, this game definitely um, favors the opponent at this point. If I had fetched a basic at the outset, this would be a totally different situation, I think. Uh, so I mean, which is to say, in games two and three, I'm going to actually uh, know what I'm playing against, and I won't uh, get cheesed out of the game by a Blood Moon so early. So this thing does have trample. It's going to go right over the snake. And they drew a card with this thing. So yeah, I'm going to block just to get value out of the Coiling Oracle. Otherwise, this Eternal Witness is not doing anything right now. Okay, we take five, we go to nine. Opponent's got a bazillion mana to use. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven mana, four cards in hand. Um, Clothis, yeah. Oh, and Clothis is alive. That's cool. So, you know, like a deputy would be good. Um, basic lands would be good. Opponent seeing why I put my 1-1 one -one in front of his Gargaroth now. Otherwise, seems like not maybe, maybe not the best play. So you want to hit that basic? <laughs> okay, no basics. No basics for me. Thing is, I don't think... You know, Blood Moon is not so crazy sensational against our deck. It, it, can, it can get us. And it's getting us pretty hard in this game. But when it really gets you in like a game one like this... It's actually kind of good because then the opponent is going to like really prioritize it, and we, we can typically play around it pretty well. Um, yeah, so this is just not really going our way. Obviously, death, Ice Fang, uh, Quaddle, not going to have Death Touch. Um, we've got, we can't cast any of the spells in our hand. Uh, they've got this 6-6 six, six Trampler that's drawing cards. This is going to drain me. Um, I mean, I'll just pass the turn. do have Force online, so it's something. The opponent's going to have four cards. And they're going to drop to five um, off of the Gargaroth. Uh, and this is like a bolt to my face. A stomp to my face. Um, all right. And they know I have a force, I think, because the, uh, one of the oracles uh, drew me that card. So Clothis actually can't ping me here. I don't really think I have outs. Um, I mean, I guess a deputy is pretty decent. Um, now they are, all right, it's casting it as a creature. I mean, like uh, Stonehorn Dignitary into like Soul Herder would be something. So if I can live, I can tick the Aether Isle up to four and uh, 
four and but yeah, you know, four keep four and two, I guess. Because Stonehorn as a top deck would at least like Ice Fang Quaddle is going to give me another top deck. They've got two cards in hand. Could easily be like a Lightning Bolt or another Stomp. But I, I have Force, I guess, if they try to cast it now, but they would just cast it on my turn if they have uh, Burn. All right, so they're going to draw a card here. And I have to prevent... Well, first of all, I have to block this thing. Uh, and then I have to prevent two damage from this guy. So I guess I'll, I'll throw all the snakes in front. And hopefully draw... Stonehorn Dignitary. Wait, did I mess that up? Why? <laughs> what was I... What was that, seven? Anyhow, anyhow, I'm going to keep going. I must have missed something with the damage. I thought I was going to one there. I think I just totally messed up the math. Yeah, lightning bolt, why not? Um, I think that'll do it. Opponent with pretty much the, the nuts in this game. Turn two, Blood Moon. Got the second island. Opponent timing their plays pretty well here. Um... Yeah, and that'll do it. All right. As I said, um, Blood Moon, most often not backbreaking against us, uh, particularly when we have two Ether Vials online, but they just got it out before we got really any basics uh, going. We got fortunate to draw the, uh, the Glass Pool Mimic. So Glass Pool Mimic, actually uh, a spell that we could cast with one blue source and nothing else. Um, so a good showing already from Glass Pool Mimic. Don't really love all the forces against like what is an extremely creature heavy deck. Bring in all of this stuff. Bring in the extra path. Um, they have scavenging oozes and they have um, clothes to keep me off of my graveyard stuff, but I like to make them have it. Um, really my graveyard stuff is super good against them. As far as things that we want to call for, I think we do have a number of things that are significant, like uh, Stonehorn, Skyclave, Knight of Autumn, um, Oriok Champion. So I think I probably want to keep all the calls in. Obviously, the Ether Vials are one of our sort of um, best cards uh, to help against Blood Moon and such. So Teferi, not that important. I mean, it can bounce a Blood Moon. You can bounce a big creature. It's okay, but I do need to cut six cards, so let's let's start. Let's start doing that. Um, soul Herder, a little bit weak to their stomps and their lightning bolts, so I'll trim the, the one Soul Herder, lean heavy, more heavily on Ephemerate and Thassa. Glass Pool, although it was good, um, not sure how critical having like a, um, a copying effect is when I need, when I need so much uh, space. I need to trim so many cards. Um, yeah, typically I don't. I think I might just sideboard out all but one of my forces. I might even get rid of the the last force just because we can lean on on Ether Gust and then things like Skyclave and Night of Autumn, even Oro just to gain life. Um, so if I trim that last force, Deputy dies to Bolt. It's a little weak. I think we can uh, depend on Night and Skyclave. And then maybe Watcher is, is a little bit too slow in the matchup. Yeah, Worship, Worship and, and Oriok Champion are a combo that they can often uh, not beat because Oriok has pro red. So as long as they don't accidentally block like a green creature, they can never like bolt an Oriok Champion or stomp it or anything like that. So if I can get Worship and Oriok Champion down... Um, should be GG. Sometimes they bring in Cinder Vines and get it down against us, and Cinder Vines can sack to blow up a Worship, but then, of course, I can always potentially get it back with Eternal Witness. Um, yeah, this is a keep. It's a weird one, but it's a keep.
we've got a lot of card draw with these uh, Kawadals. I know it's I know it's short on basics, but you know we we don't have a ton of basics in the deck. And if the opponent uh, doesn't get the early Blood Moon, we'll be able to cast our spells. If if we can get a second mana down, we can even float white and then purge um, purge a Blood Moon. So we just really need to draw like any other land here, and we should be pretty good to go. Okay, opponent did mulligan to five uh, this game. Wait, I didn't mean to click that. Let's just pass the turn. Just rearranging my cards. Yeah, actually, glass pool was like my only castable spell last game um, because I only had one basic on the board. Pretty much no matter what. Um, yeah, I'm just going to jam these Aether Vials. Uh, so now they do have a window to get a Blood Moon down immediately uh, bef before I can play a second land and, and hold up Purge. Um, we'll see if they have it. Um, but, you know, we've got so much card draw here. Opponent did Mull to 5. Uh, they have a third land here. Or, sorry, a third mana, I should say. And, okay, so Pillage is totally fine. I actually don't care about that at all because we've got Aether Vials for days. So just, um, okay, well, Path is a thing, um, but we're just going to keep playing Aether Vials. Let's see if they keep playing per, uh, Pillages. I don't think they play too many Pillages. No, I mean, I just, this is literally like the third match I played with it. I didn't draw it in the first two matches last night. Uh, this is literally, the, it was the first game um, just just now, and I was able to cast it when I couldn't cast anything else in my hand. So I'd say that that was pretty clutch. It, uh, it didn't win me the game, but it was pretty clutch. Oh, that's, that's more than pretty clutch. Um, so I've already played my land, um, just passed the turn, hold up all sorts of instant speed, fun stuff. Opponents on three cards, they'll be drawing up to four. So now, like, anything they play, I can just purge it right away. Um, we've got Uro uh, coming through Aether Vial next turn. Opponent continuing to play lands out. Which means that we can uh, do some stuff. Get some snakes on the board. Oh, okay, so I've got all four ether vials with me this uh this game. That happens sometimes. Alright, well we'll get another basic now. That's nice. Actually, I think in this matchup getting a basic planes is the most important thing. Nice. Actually kind of good that the first game went so quickly, so I have plenty of time to play um, two more games. I think I just pass here and see what they're up to. No rush on anything here. Hey Cactus, good to see you here. Um, I, uh, Hood Rat, the deck list is uh, Cardboard Live over on the side of the, the screen over here. I want them to cast, like, something gigantic. Yeah, like that thing. Thing's about to get... Oh, well, actually, yeah, I can path that. That's fine. Um, okay, that resolves. It's not like Primeval Titan that gets an ETB uh, trigger. Obviously, I can't purge that, but, but I, can, I can path it. So um, I'm going to crack this. Uh, and as I was saying, I think just having uh, basic planes is, is pretty pretty good. So, yeah, as I said, I'm going to just use my mana right now, path this thing, opponents on two cards. Um, now I've got Death Touch with the Snakes, probably not going to be super significant. Uh, and yeah, it's time for Uro here. Opponent maybe scooping, maybe not. All right, nice. That gets us closer to escaping Uro. I don't really even want to play this extra ether vial because um, it just takes extra time with all the triggers. Might be lazy, maybe I should. Um, in case they blow one up, maybe I should get it down. It's not that bad and I do have a lot of time. So yeah, I'll play, I'll play this ether vial. 
Okay. Like an eternal witness would be pretty awesome at this point. Uh, opponent with the stomping grounds. And what? A stomp. Uh, that's sort of fine. Nothing I could do about it. Uh, but they're probably just going to cast this creature, and then I'm just going to path it. Puts another card in the graveyard. Uh, gets me enough resources to um, escape Uro. I could actually path my own dude here to get um, to get more green, sorry, more blue, and escape Uro right now, just, uh, well, on my next turn. But I actually think I just want to path this guy. I'm going to leave Purge for things that are harder to deal with, like well, Blood Moon's not even that much of a concern at this point, but Clothis, um, even though I've got Skyclave Apparition. Uh, yeah, I, I think I'm just fine. Um, taking a little damage from this Bone Crusher and um, just waiting to draw a land that will let me escape Uro for the time being. Also, just like an Eternal Witness uh, can get back Windswept Heath for um, more blue mana. I wonder if I want to get Skyclave down just to increase the clock. Um, I feel like I don't. I just sort of play patiently, leave up answers. There we go. So I think that means I'm going to escape Uro right now. Should have passed in response to Stomp. It wasn't on the board when they cast Stomp. What? I don't, maybe I don't understand what you're saying. Just refocused on the game. Wait, that wasn't that wasn't what I wanted to do. <laughs> I'm getting so distracted. Path my Coatl, so Stomp would fizzle. So you get second blue. Yeah, but that right. If I was going to do that line, I wanted to get a land back, but uh, I didn't do that. <laughs> Pretty silly, but casting Oro is sort of fine. Mm, would have been better to escape him. But Ephemerate was actually a nice draw, so um, not not a big deal. I just need to focus a little bit more, not get uh, sidetracked. But yeah, if I was going to do that line, I should have thought about it in response to Stomp. But uh, so Sky, uh, yeah, this is fine. Um, but I think I might want to respond, uh, just use my mana. Uh, I don't really want to get anything out of the graveyard because we want to escape Uro. So maybe I just draw a card with Coatl if they feel like killing it. It's not such a problem. Okay. More untapped mana. Oh, but now now we do need... Now it's going to be hard to escape Uro, but unless, unless I get rid of Blood Moon, but we have a way to get rid of Blood Moon, so all is well. So I was saying um, in the last game that Blood Moon is often not so amazing against us. So perfectly timed Lightning Bolt... Um, That's going to resolve. Um, Ephemerate goes to the graveyard, and now we can uh, do all these triggers here. Uh, I think I'm going to say no, and yes, and yes. Okay, so going to vial this in, um, get rid of Blood Moon. Actually, I should play this first. Well, it comes in untapped anyway. Actually, I do I want to play it first? I, I don't have the blue to escape just yet. Um, so I might want to start by looking for that with Coiling Oracle. Another Uro. Um, we can play the Canopy Vista. Um, we can... Vial in the Skyclave. Cast the second Uro. Nope. 
getting for one, and uh, slowly uh, we are building a board presence. If the opponent casts something like uh, an Anger of the Gods, um, we still have removal to get rid of the token, uh, and at any moment, just drawing a blue land will give us access to a 6-6 uh, Mega Value Monster. So let's try to close this game out um, sort of quickly, if possible, so that we have enough time to play a comfortable game three. That was a cool draw. Okay, uh, yeah, so what can the opponent draw here? Probably not much. Uh, is the stream having issues for other people or just for Kale? Are we, let me, I can check to see if we're dropping frames. Doesn't look like it. Um, so it might, hopefully it's just on, on your end, Kale. Um, okay. Thanks for letting me know, guys. Um, well, hopefully that resolves uh, itself, Kale. Um, so that was a solid game. Uh, we kept a one shock land, three ether vial hand, and, but the opponent did mulligan to five. Um, as predicted, Blood Moon, not such a huge issue. Either we're going to be able to get ether vials down, you know, and or uh, get our basics down. So... I feel like sideboarding Glass Pool Mimic out here is reasonable because it's when you use it as a land, it's a non-basic, so um, so it's probably just going to be a mountain. It doesn't really help the mono base that much in theory. Uh, and as for the copying ability, I'm just not sure how relevant it is. Um, I think the setup that I have here is probably pretty good. So I think I'm probably just going to submit. And yeah, just hope for good cards. Ah oh man, even like one land would have made this awesome. One starting with seven, and unfortunately I have to mulligan this and be disciplined. Okay, all right, we got, we got paid off there. So we're going to go get green, and then we're going to go get blue, and we're going to play an ether vial, and we're going to play an... Maybe, I, I think keeping two ether vials is probably pretty good. I'm going to keep this. Um, maybe I actually go get, like, white with this one. Like, get green, and then white, and then I just vial in the coaddle, and um, yeah. So I'm going to, actually I've got the white in hand, so I'll just bottom the, uh, the Flooded Strand, save a little bit of life. Okay, cool. All right, good to go. Let's see how hard the opponent is uh, leaning on Blood Moon with this hand. Okay, they're going to have some turn two, turn two power. I mean, maybe I get blue here since I have green here next turn. If I was going to do green, maybe I should have led on the windswept teeth. Um, yeah, blue blue seems fine, I guess. If they miss on the blood moon for one turn, we'll get all our basics. All right, so let's not mess up the sequencing. Do they ever have Arbor Elf without Utopia Sprawl? All 
Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And we've got a long way to go, but if that's their turn too, I'm okay with it. Uh, green green uh, would be good to cast Uro at some point, but we do have these um, Ether Vials. And we do have the white mana to cast Worship when we get there, so... a Gargaroth or something. It's a Bloodbraid Elf. So they're coming pretty hot and heavy. Uh, Anger of the Gods, probably not going to cast that, so we're getting a little bit lucky ourselves uh, with that one there. We are going to need to draw some creatures to make worship good. So maybe maybe green was the right call in in hindsight, uh, but still, uh, even still, the only card I'd be able to cast would be um, Eladomri's call. I feel like I should probably vial in the Ice Fang Kowaddle now, give myself a chance to draw that basic forest. Hey, hey, guys, guys, pro plays. Jesus. All right, deck wants me to do okay in this game. All right, come on. So we're playing against double Blood Braid Elf here. Is that what's happening? Uh, Season Pyromancer. Probably better. Okay, they pitched a bolt. They've got green floating. Do I want to path that? I don't think so. I think I just let the bolt resolve. When it's down to one card in hand, um, as I said, we do need creatures. Um, so we've got the call, though, which is awesome. We've got the Eladomri's call. We've got the um, Uro in the graveyard, um, and the opponent is contributing to the graveyard. If we call for, um, you know, honestly, I just kind of want to deal with their board. Um, so if we call for, like, Skyclave and, and like, kill the exile, their Bloodbraid. Um, so this is going to resolve... Or maybe I just call for, just call for an Eternal Witness and get back an Ice Fang Kowaddle and just keep putting up like resistance that way. Uh, Ice Fang Kowaddle will have Death Touch. I'm chilling at 19 life. Opponent with a bazillion lands. We've got that Uro. We're two mana away from getting to it. So, I play this Flooded Strand, I call for Skyclave Apparition, Skyclave Apparition blows this up, um, and then I have, I can go get Basic Island, Basic Forest, and then um, I'll have two more fetches in the graveyard to, uh, to, to escape Uro. Problem is, okay, I can get I should wait to do this though, because um maybe they play a second blood moon next turn and we want to go get deputy. Just passing the turn here, I think. I 
I just I would really love to dodge like scavenging ooze for like one turn. Uh, okay. I think that's fine. ADV, Neil. Untapping lands. This dude has something to spend a thousand mana on? Well, that's random. Oh, they're just ticking it up so that they can do overrun next turn. Now, I guess the question is, do I want to get, like, Eternal Witness, get back call? No, because then I, I think I'm just going to get, like I said, do the play that I said. Um, but hang on, I can actually get... Um, all right, I think just getting Uro uh, going is really good, yeah. So we're getting Skyclave Apparition here. I could get Deputy, but I think Skyclave is probably the way to go. Um, Oh, Knight of Autumn is another another option. I think Knight is a little bit cleaner, actually. Well, Skyclave works a little better with the um, Ephemerate Blink plan, maybe. Let's get Skyclave. Um, they're on zero cards, so I'm not really afraid of anything here. I have to start playing faster, though. I'm, like, playing a little bit nervous. Ephemerate, pretty good card. Maybe I should have held on to that, uh, but we'll see how this goes. Overrun gives plus three and trample, right? So I don't, that shouldn't be lethal. I can just eat one of their creatures with Uro. I could also just Skyclave right now if they... Maybe I should actually do that. Like, I, like in response to them casting something, I'll, ca I'll Ephemerate another Blood Moon. Awesome. So we go get another... Well, we can't get a basic, so that was actually a silly crack there. Um, but I don't really care about Blood Moon anymore. Like, not at all. So in response to this, I'm going to Skyclave their Garrick. We should be good to go as long as I can play fast. So heads down.
Uh, maybe this was hasty, but let's see. Knight of Autumn is going to contribute to the beatdown plan. Opponent is trying to like time me out with relic uh, triggers. <clears throat> So I'm just going to make this a 4-3 and start getting in with it. don't really care about their... Uh, Blood Moon. Let's see how they block here. Do have another Uro in the deck? Wow, they cracked that. Wow, okay, all right. So, yeah, hang on. Let's just uh, get some, card some value here, draw some cards. It might be time, well, soonish to get rid of the Blood Moon so I can crack some of these fetches.
Nice. Because you guys know what I'm getting here, right? Oh, did I take him out? I took him out. <laughs> I took him out. That's terrible. I was going to go get... Oh my god, I forgot to buy all of my creatures. I'm getting too sassy here. Wow. Jesus, I keep drawing cards. <laughs> I forgot to violin my creatures. All right. Oof. <laughs> yeah, tapping with Thassa. Tapping with Thassa. Um, I I kind of forgot about that for a turn or two, but but I remembered. Um, I was going to get Deputy, um, and then I would have gotten rid of both of the illusions, but I I remembered <laughs> pretty quickly that I I took Deputy out because it's weak to Lightning Bolt. Um, but I kind of kind of forgot the combo uh, between Skyclave and Deputy cleaning everything up. But, you know, we had it covered with worship, um, so, like, deputy cleaning up the tokens, really not that important. I was just, um, just going to keep drawing cards. Actually, you, I have, like, 12 cards left in the, in the library, so, yeah, a win is a win. I mean, it was, like, it was fairly clean. I was, it was all under control. Opponent did seem to top deck a few lands in a row, but even if they top deck gas, like, I, I had purge for, like, the whole game, um... How does how does purging the moon win the game? I it, I don't think Blood Moon was keeping me from winning the game, was it? Like all I I have five five lands and and the two ether vials. If the question is like why didn't I attack cleanly through the illusions? I said earlier just a second ago that um, I kind of forgot about Thassa's tap. Um, so having extra lands could have helped me tap down their two creatures, but also just even tapping down one of them would have helped me a lot. So. Not playing with my food underneath two minutes. Um, <laughs> the other day on the stream, uh, one of my control opponents told me they were going to report me because I was stalling or something. I was like, this is not on purpose, man. Like, I'm <laughs> This deck takes a long time to play. So I, I mean, what it boils down to is I just kind of forgot about Thassa's tap as far as combat is concerned. They had a whole bunch of um, dorks that could chump for a bunch of turns. Um, so that was like keeping me from winning, but I was going to start getting in in the air and just going super wide. <clears throat> we did see a um, an Anger of the Gods revealed at one point off of a Bloodbraid Elf, uh, but I guess it just got shuffled back into the deck and the opponent never drew it again. Um, Anger of the Gods, unless they kept a Lightning Bolt in hand, um, it wouldn't be enough to deal with the Uro. Um, and we we still have another Uro. We still have we still have Eladomri's calls. So ended with thirty eight life. That's a little bit ridiculous. Yeah, but at the same time, like I was I was in a winning position. And if if the only thing that beats that that beats me is if I overextend and the opponent has like Bolt plus Anger of the Gods, then I just lose my entire board and uh, have I can't I can't finish the opponent off um, in enough time. Like if I just dump my hand and I go down to like like zero cards. Um, so keeping some creatures in hand is actually pretty smart to play around in anger, I think. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, again, like I just wasn't really interested in dumping my hand. I was playing as many spells per turn as I sort of felt like I, I should be playing. Uh, all right, cool. So um, round one in the bank. Um, it should be a good matchup. They did completely um, cheese us out with, with Blood Moon in, uh, in the first game. But I told you guys, Blood Moon's not that crazy against us. The opponent leaned really hard on it. They snap kept their seven. Turn two, Blood Moon, I think in both games two and three. Maybe game one, two, and three. They might have had the turn two, Blood Moon. Uh, but we had the answers, and we had the basics, and we had the ether vials, so. Ah. But, but, uh... Matches like that that go, get really close to time, which you guys know happens like pretty often with this deck, they just like, they get a little stressful. So um, I have a slightly elevated heart rate right now. <laughs> I just need to like chill out. Uh, give me one sec. I'll be back and we'll jump into round two. All right, so uh, thanks again, everybody, for joining me. Uh, it's kind of an overcast day today. It's nice being inside playing Magic. Uh, here's a quick look at the list. Uh, remember, it's over on the side. I think it's the left side with Cardboard Live. MVP in that match was definitely, um, well, in that game in particular, was definitely Uro. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I've gone back up to two copies of this card. Uh, it's on the top of a lot of people's cards, uh, list of cards to ban in the format. Incredibly powerful. Uh, if the opponent doesn't have the scavenging ooze to get rid of it right on time, you saw it just took over that game. Uh, and if they did manage to like bolt plus anger it, um, you saw I just drew like drew the extra uro. Um, so running two is pretty clutch. At that point, I think I had fourteen cards left um, in the library, uh, and I had plenty of stuff in the graveyard. So. Cast a second Uro. You know, Uro drawing cards does get us closer to decking ourselves, um, but with six power and the removal that was in my hand, um, I think I probably could have made it happen. Okay, uh, let's go. Round two. Okay, found an opponent pretty quickly. I wanted to check if this person had any trophies, uh, but I I do th I do think that we do have game because we run forces, right? So yes, absolutely. Opponent says good luck. I say good luck, and um, you know if this is uh, like any kind of regular deck that I'm playing against, this might not be the best hand to keep. We're on the draw. Um, I do quite like Aether Vials, um, and it's good against a lot of decks. This hand is just weak against aggro, basically. Um, Force doesn't stop Charbelcher. You're talking about the one with uh, Balustrade Spy, I guess. Uh, I just haven't seen the deck very much, so um, Meddling Mage seems okay. Ah. Uh, I mean, once I draw another land, we can cast Eladarmi's Call, get whatever we want through these Aether Vials. It's such a weird opening hand, but I'm going to keep it. It's borderline. Yeah, no, I know. Balustrade Spy is, is a thing. All right, so we're just losing this. Um, obnoxious pairing. Um, 
there's no no way to no way to win this in this first game i don't think opponent kept their seven of course uh, they've got the turn one amulet sure we're seeing a turn three titan here God, I'm so sick of this stupid deck. <sighs> Just absolutely unfun. So Deputy is obviously pretty good here, um, but we're not there yet on the Aether Vials. Um, I mean, if they play a Titan, I'm just wrecked. So like a Force here, maybe? Well, that lets me cast Uro, I guess, but I... Yeah, that's probably fine. And then next turn I can... Because they have Titan, then these Dryads are wrecking me with Valakits. Um, but we can call next turn and Violin, Deputy, or whatever we want to do, basically. Uh, so I'm just getting green and blue, I think. And we're just going to play uh, Oro. See if we can match the opponent's ramp. No, we cannot. All right, so Titan time and, uh, and scoops and moving on, basically. All right, well, we have another... Uh-huh, uh-huh. Is this exciting watching watching this this for you guys? Are they casting that sorcery? They're casting that sorcery. All right. Well, there's a chance that there's no primeval titan in there. Uh, Valakit, copy Valakit, take eight bazillion damage. Um, oh no, they're gonna give it haste, right? <laughs> they're gonna give it haste. Oh my god, this deck is so stupid. I mean, was I on the play this game, or were they on the play? They were on the play. So this is on the play with, with the complete nuts. If I was on the play, maybe I could be ticking Vial up to four. I'd still be dead, though. Uh, and then call for... Um, I'm still dying to Valica triggers. I'm literally just dying right now before I even have to block anything. Cactus, you're saying, uh, I think McDerp is saying they played against Oops All Spells four times in the last two leagues. And Cactus, are you saying that you have not seen Oops All Spells or you haven't seen Titan? Let's, let's get our heads in the game. We're playing against Titan here. So Path is okay. Um, Wind is okay. Ether Gust is okay. Knight kills... Um, Knight kills Dryads. Ashiok is our all-star. Um, worship kind of helps, but not really. Uh, Uro is kind of not really the axis that we're fighting on. You know, worship, worship has won me games against this stupid matchup before, so I'm going to bring in Worship. And um, I, I really kind of hate Force in the matchup. 
but it's kind of a necessary evil because if you can stop a the amulet of vigor, it helps a lot. If you can stop that sorcery or um, like a summoner's pact. Uh, I don't think we're calling for anything super important. So I think I can just trim all the calls. Uro is just a way to like generate value and get a big body at some point. So um, Teferi is not very useful. Soul Herd is pretty slow. Deputy is great for Field of the Dead zombies. Um, Soul Herder is slow, but they don't have removal really in the early part of the game, so it can generate value. Uh, I don't really know what we're copying with Mimic. Um, so I think I board out Mimic. I don't know when I should board out Mimic, or whether I ever board it out, or like always board it out, or what. Thos is way too slow. Um, and I don't even have dorks to ramp towards Ashiok, so extremely hard matchup. I like that Watcher for Tomorrow digs deep. Um, I, I, maybe I'll just trim one of these Uros and see how it goes. All right, so this round, pretty much a buy for the opponent. You can't really hang with this deck. I mean, we got all the good cards. All the good cards, but... Can't keep the one lander. Although in in matchups in matchups that are like eighty five fifteen or something like that, uh, opponent says they know me. <laughs> oh, the opponent was uh was watching earlier, I think. Um, and they were, I think they commented earlier. You were watching earlier. <laughs> So I think I keep this hand and just hope to draw lands. I think that's kind of where we're at. I felt excellent without Venser. I never want I never want Venser. I think I have to keep this hand and just pray that I draw lands. If I draw one land, I get or Oracle, I get to I get another look. Um because otherwise other I've got every card I want and I'm just losing this matchup anyway. So I'm going to I'm going to do one of these um yeah, opponent's talking about the 5-0 with Mangara list. Um, yeah, I'll check it out. Um, are you in the Discord? Um, so anyhow, I'm going to keep the stupid one lander, and you guys can laugh at me. Maybe I'll grab um, a link for the opponent. I don't know what the default link... Um, is like if it if it's if it's never expire no limit okay it's my turn i'm not going to crack this land <laughs> forever basically so, is there a land on the top of the deck? You guys have probably like five seconds to call it. Even less, since they're playing a tap land. <laughs> Ether Vile. <laughs> That's such a troll. Um, so we get uh, blue-white, I guess. Blue-white? Blue-white. Terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Opponent keeping the slow, slow hand against a deck that he knows he can crush. So, just like playing a dryad fair and square on turn three. No, no, no plays on turn one. No plays on turn two. And get that land deck. Give me that land. Let's get some some math helping me out here. Got more lands than anything else in my deck. I don't think... Did I sideboard out? Oh, oh my god, I didn't draw land. <laughs> I did not sideboard out my, uh, my glass pool, so I still got that.
All right, so they've got an Azusa. They're just cruising towards this Titan. Oh, wait, I guess I can just path the Azusa here. Uh, seems reasonable, uh, but they're, sh they're already going to get their, their value out of it. So I guess I just hold the path now for the Titan. And if they get a Titan down before I get Ashiok down, then I just lose, and it looks like that's going to be the case here. Um, yeah. So I kept the super sketchy 15% hand uh, in a 15% matchup. Like, if I just drew land-land and I got down an early Ashiok, I'd have a legit chance to win the game. And now I'm just drawing zero lands, so... Oi. Uh, so... <laughs> Pass the turn, and I think I have to discard the hand size here. So, um, this guy's gonna draw me to land soon. I got two paths, maybe it's gonna be relevant though. I like the paths. Eternal Witness gets back a path, but I'm not taking up my ether vial for a little bit. Um, I've got enough to work with in hand. I feel like I can just, but the Witness buys back Ashiok later, but I've got two more Witnesses, so I think Witness bites the dust, as strange as it might seem. I, I sort of can't pitch Deputy to the Force. Because we need to, we need to control the, uh, the Zombos. Alright, they have a Tolaria West, but they have no Blue Mana currently. And also they would need a... There we go. That's going to bounce the Teleria West. It's going to make more zombies. Uh, so we're sort of controlling this situation. Oh, they get, to keep, they get to keep playing their bounce land to make more zombies. I guess I should path Azusa now. Taking this one is fine. Um, path Azusa, untap... Pass and plan on pathing the Primeval Titan. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm pathing my own Kawaddle here. I just need to stop what the opponent is doing. Like, we'll draw lands when we draw lands. So I do have to take up my my uh my ether vial here. Unfortunately. Oh, they picked up field, so they didn't get an extra zombie. Interesting. Opponent. Opponent in the tank. During my upkeep. But uh, th this opponent is, uh, if you guys scroll up in the chat, if you've been here with me the whole time, uh, he was in the chat earlier, uh, Mistaken69. So we're going to take this up. Okay, well, I mean, Ephemerates are pretty good uh, in combination with... Oh, wait, um, well, uh, I guess, you know, the uh, sequencing here is I'm just going to path the Primeval Titan. Uh... <clears throat> They'll get a zombie for it after they play the field out again. Then I just ephemerate the deputy as necessary in subsequent turns. Now, of course, if they have like a dismember for my uh, deputy of detention, that would be pretty gross. And it, but I, I guess I have uh, the force, so I guess they would need two dismembers. Looks like they don't have it. Did I not attack with my ice fang? That's curious. I feel like I probably should have. Summoner's pact. I, I have to hit that. So, man, imagine if we got Ashiok down in this game, like. I, the opponent wouldn't be able to cast that Summoner's Pact. Well, they'd be able to cast it, but they wouldn't be able to do what it tells them to do. Do they have, like, a Veil of Summer here? Or a Mystical Dispute? 
All right. <laughs> okay. Another Summoner's Pact. So unless... Yeah, I, I think I'm just kind of dead now. Maybe I take Aetherile up to four and pray that I draw Stonehorn Dignitary? Okay, I don't really have many more outs, but if I take it up to four, then I literally have a one card in the deck right now that, that Aethervile can put into play. Took Thassa out. I've only got the uh, Stonehorn left. As far as three drops go, don't have too much super interesting either. I guess I have, like, Eternal Witness. So I'll, I'll keep it on three. I think I'm just dead anyway. Hey, Eternal Witness. Eternal Witness can get back a land or a force. Uh, land seems pretty good. Get me close to this Ashiok. Also just gets back Path seems actually quite nice because i'm not dead to zombies next turn so just getting a path seems pretty good here i won't um i can just block a zombie um with with deputy and take like eight or something so i mean i'd love to get lands but i think just killing the uh the titan is is what i need to do yeah See, I'm going to attack with this Ice Fang, I think. Opponent is saying, um... So opponent's on two cards. Beginning of combat, I am going to path this. Ridiculous card. Uh, they're gonna get more zombies uh, or not because they have no more basics, I guess. Well, that's good for us. What two cards do they have in hand? Uh, okay. They played a land, so we know one of the cards in their hand is a land. Uh, they bounced for Tolaria West. Okay, transmuting Tolaria West. Probably getting another... Well, Summoner's Pact now for the... Um, Dryad, I'm sure. Oh, Primeval Titan. Here's another Primeval Titan. Interesting. I guess it gets, like, more Tolaria West, but I get to... If I draw any more lands, like another White Source, I can just keep Ephemerating and Pathing. But I do need to Ephemerate Deputy at some point. Uh, maybe just drawing Soul Herder here would be awesome, so I get, like, a free Blink on the Deputy. But I, the fact that I'm, like, on turn 6 in this game is a little ridiculous, keeping one land and then top decking either Vial on turn 2. One can't have too many lands left in their deck. Oh, you know what? They're going to get Bojukabog. Yeah, and they do. All right, that's pretty smart. Well, you know, we weren't really planning on leaning on the graveyard that heavily. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's going to become very hard for us to deal with this Primeval Titan. That's what happens when you keep a one lander and don't draw any lands through the top nine cards of your deck is that literally what happened here guys i started with 53 cards in my deck and now i have no seven cards left zero lands in the top seven cards <laughs> seems unlikely i think at this point i i literally have to tick this up uh to four and hope that i draw uh stone horn <laughs> did not draw stone horn 
Um, so I'm not just literally dead yet. Um, Are you guys watching this? Are you like, you know, watching TV or something? Because I don't, I don't know how interesting this is. It's a terrible matchup that has gone terribly, terribly wrong here. And now I have a useless, a useless ether vial, one land. I'm <clears throat> taking six from a Primeval Titan, unless they happen to also have the double strike land. Uh, they, I, they had the Hanware Garrison, which I feel like it's either or for giving haste. Rather than like Sun Home or whatever it is. What, what land? I don't even know what lands they got. Like. Just a bounce land, I guess. Karu land. Don't even have Death Touch. If they're literally out of lands in their deck, so they can't get any more field triggers, then I can ephemerate the Primeval uh, Deputy to get rid of the Primeval Titan. They have another Primeval Titan, I guess, or this like Sim Turn Timber Sim Symbiosis. Uh, well, okay, they have a land in hand, so they've got they've got infinite more zombie tokens. Okay, you got it. There's a Dryad. That means that, that we're going to get Valakitted to death. So I'm going to tell the guy nice games. Thank you. And good luck with the rest. I'll try to check out that Mangara list. Um, concede the game. Concede the game. Man, I, I want to go 5-0, but like, I keep getting paired against stuff like Titan. When I play Qs, I get paired against f nice matchups like Lantern and Humans, and then as soon as I jump into a league, it's like Tron and Primeval Titan. Let's see if that guy found the... Uh... Doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like he found his way to the... Uh... I gave him a link to the Discord. All right. Jumping back in. M. Hayashi, killing it as usual. That guy's amazing. Oh, hey. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, maybe somebody in the chat can get you a functioning uh, link to, uh, to Discord. I don't know why it's not working for you. Uh, this is a lovely hand. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Opponent keeping seven. And maybe it's a, like a shadow deck, which would be pretty good for us. Uh, turn one, tapped Temple Garden. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Witness is a clear take here. Um, do we want to just start thinning the deck? I think that's probably the case. Otherwise, we just go green, white, blue, white. It seems fine. <clears throat> Well, uh, mistaken. Uh, good games. Uh, Titan is, uh, is this like a some kind of mono leak or something? Well, now I can pass the turn <clears throat> and just you know see what they're working with and cast Eladomri's call. Uh, good cards in this spot. Probably Oro. Oro is probably just going to blow them out. So um, I can get a basic white here. Pass the turn. And yeah, mistaken. Thanks very much for um, <clears throat> excuse me, jumping into the Discord. Uh, sorry, jumping into the the chat. To I, they're playing uh, counter spells, I'm sure. So I'm going to cast call right now, and I'm going to go get Uro. I'm going to blow out this <clears throat> black blue deck. Let's go. I'm tapping, tapping, tapping. Okay. <laughs> Uh <clears throat> 
<clears throat> excuse me, something like <clears throat> went down the wrong pipe. Uh, they went bottom bottom with their with their scries. They're opting. <clears throat> Sorry if you guys can hear that noise outside. All right, so they're leaving up two mana. Maybe they have this another omen. Uh, but now, pretty clear play. I'm just going to get a basic island and cast Uro. And maybe they have Kling, maybe they don't. Maybe they have Mana Leak. I have no idea what's going on here. Certainly not <clears throat> a top-tier deck that I'm playing against. Um, lots of people play all sorts of... Um... Okay, so Remand is a thing. It could be like um, an inverter combo deck, since they're scrying really hard. <clears throat> Stonehorn maybe not going to be that relevant. Sure, that's that's my guess at this point is inverter combo. Yeah, it is, and I get to just blow up this Jace, which is obviously pretty good for us. Uh, did they just mill me, or did they mill themselves? They targeted themselves. All right, so now I cast my uh, Apparition, Apparition. If they have removal for the Apparition, they get a 4-4, which is pretty good for them, but getting rid of their combo pieces is pretty good for us. <clears throat> and, uh, I mean, filling up the graveyard with stuff for Uro seems pretty nice. So uh, they could also play um, like Shadow of Doubt, Yes, so why don't I just get my base, my land right now? I'll probably get <clears throat> green blue here. Oh, I have green blue in hand, so I'll just get blue white. <clears throat> so now we want uh, we have Eladami's call. Next turn we can go get um, if they play another Jace or something. <clears throat> oh, wow. Main deck Relic. That's pretty sick. Aura's not in yet, though. I can go get, uh, like, Soul Herder and just keep blinking the Skyclave. Problem with that is I give them a 4-4. They've got one mana up for the Relic. <clears throat> one Scrying 2. Of course, I'll let you guys know what they do with the Scries. Oh, okay, so they're pushing, uh, which is sort of okay. I can call for Deputy and get rid of that token. And having Deputy on the board seems okay anyway. <clears throat> oh, and now I have Eternal Witness. But uh, So Eternal Witness, getting back something from the graveyard might be smart since they've got the Relic. I could also just get rid of the Relic right now by getting another Skyclave. But I can't. I don't have enough white to get another Skyclave. Oh, it's absolutely Inverter. Um, I mentioned that earlier. So getting rid of the rel getting rid of the Relic protects my graveyard, which seems obviously pretty clutch uh, in this situation. So get if I get rid of, to get rid of the Relic. Oh wait, I can. I can't do have enough white for that. I can go green, white, 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 blue. Get rid of the Relic. I'll take four next turn, but I'm not really. Um, <clears throat> concerned with my life total. I am concerned with my graveyard. Um, who knows how many relics they have. Um, if I had one more land, I could just Ewit to get Skyclave back. Um, but we do, we do need to answer this relic. It's sort of a big... Uh, the graveyard's a big part of our strategy here. Just got to be careful with our taps. We're going to go white, green... <clears throat> Skyclave. Yeah, I mean, we already saw the Jace. It's definitely Inverter. They didn't even get rid of one of my cards in the graveyard. That's nice. <clears throat> all right, all set to take four damage. You got it, opponent. You have another relic.
So this is Inverter. Oh, and now they play Thassa's Oracle, right? Exile all cards from your library face down. Then shuffle all cards from your graveyard into your library. So they have two... That means they must have... <clears throat> well, if they have the Thassa's uh, Oracle... Maybe they're just trying to win with the beatdown here. Trying to beat me down before they deck. Um, so witness, get back another Skyclave, get rid of Inverter. Could also just cast Uro, um, <clears throat> see what I draw. I think just witness, witness get back uh, <clears throat> Skyclave seems fine. There's nothing that we can do to stop Athos's Oracle from resolving. We still have Deputy in the deck. I'm basically we're just trying I'm trying to deal with this 6 6 flyer right now. They they kind of have us in a weird spot. Um of course we don't have to chump lock yet. <clears throat> I mean, they only have four cards in their library, right? Oh, no, they have four cards in their hand. They have five cards in their library. So Thassa's is going to scry. Oh, wait, we can check their exile to see if they have any... Um... Oh, it's face down? It's face down. That's funny. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Now I do. Oh, uh, they went top top. So game might be over. Well, maybe they put an opt on top. Maybe they put two opts on top. Well, they went top again, so... Uh, I don't think there's any way for us to beat this, right? I mean, to beat this right now. Like, I, I think that there's ways for us to beat the deck. Um, <clears throat> but in, that, in this exact spot, I think they just had the Oracle and we had no response to the Oracle. So... Uh, what do we bring in? Ceremonious counters uh, their inverter. Uh, fatal push, veil, veil counters that. They probably also have some thought seizes and stuff. Uh, does Ashiok do anything? Um, it gets rid of their graveyard, but I don't know that. They're not searching their deck, right? They're just. I don't think they search their deck. <clears throat> they just do like inverter and scry stuff blowing up the thosses uh the scry enchantment doesn't seem that amazing um don't really think i want all these paths maybe maybe just two of them is okay just trying to think how we fight here i guess force is okay like four forces um we're really trying... I mean, Ceremonious is awesome because it lets us counter one of their creature combo pieces. Um, I don't... Yeah, I know. It does target them, but it shuffles things back into their library, and it's at sorcery speed. So their combo... So it puts cards back in their library to make it harder for them to find the Thassa's Oracle once they do Inverter. Can can somebody else chime in and let me know if this is actually tech against um against that deck? Thassa is super slow. They're not attacking, so Stonehorn comes out. <clears throat> Ella Domri's call. I mean, I don't really. I'm not looking for anything in particular. I just have to hopefully draw like Ceremonious and and counter their Inverter basically. 
so maybe it's kind of a mull to ceremonious rejection kind of situation. All right. <clears throat> Pretty sure I called Inverter as soon as I saw, I forget what the name of the enchantment is, but that enchantment that scries, Thos is something or other. I mean, this looks good enough. I'm just going to keep this. If they try to go like turn one, um, Thought Seize, I just Veil them. Okay, not going turn one thought sees. I don't think death touch is that important. I think more, much more important is just getting my colors going. Yeah, but I'm still not sure if it actually does anything meaningful. Um, so I think I'm kind of priced into just passing here. And then I'll go with uh, Kowadl. If they, so they're clinging that. I can't do anything about that. Fair enough. <clears throat> uh, so relic is kind of annoying, but not really too much we can do about it. And well, all right, now it's time to flash in this Kowadl. We're going to get blue, white. Okay, opponent exiles my land. Blue white, yes. Oh yeah, good cards. Inverter is a four drop, right? So I can just um, comfortably play spells here on this turn. I think I think I do need to draw a card. And when you don't have a land drop, you guys should probably know from watching the stream, uh, Ice Fang is always be always better. Because um, if you draw a land, you can just play it. Um, so there we go. Play a land and attack. <clears throat> Relic is for their game plan mainly. Yeah, I mean, they're main decking it. It makes sense, I guess, right? Omen of the Sea, that's what it's called. They went bottom top. They, okay, there's the third land. Sweet. So now I've got Ceremonious Rejection up, um, and I've got Veil to protect it. Um, but if they just tap out to play Inverter, then uh, we won't need Veil. So we can actually cast spells this turn. And by spells, I mean spell. <clears throat> I think I'm just going to increase my clock here by playing Coiling Oracle. Actually, no, no, I can't do that because I need to hold up rejection. Uh, so my blue is, is spoken for here. So uh, I, I think I'm just leaving up ephemerate, rejection, and veil. Okay, opting is good. Temp temple? Why do you say temple specifically? They're, they already have three mana. Oh, you mean four plus one for a counter spell? I see what you mean, I, if that's what you meant. Uh, well, that's kind of annoying, but she's going to try to kill one of my creatures, and I'm going to counter that with... Um, and then I can just blow her up, um, but she is, she is annoying. So this, I think, is a very good opportunity to cast... Veil. Okay, now they have Hexproof. I think it's time to start ephemerating. Um, but if I ephemerate... Okay, so they're getting rid of my Veil. Fair enough. I can't attack Liliana, but I think maybe I'll just blow up um, Liliana with Skyclave next turn. Maybe they push in response and they forget. Oh, they can't even target, so they can't even make that mistake. Okay, well, force would have been good against Liliana.
Okay, well, we've got a lot of forces. Um, we can now play this, hold up blue, and cast Skyclave. Let me attack first. Actually, let me Skyclave first. Am I gonna I have to discard to hand size this turn? That's funny. Ewit with with uh, I mean Ewit against Relic is probably pretty bad. Um I think let's see, force pitching, um coiling oracle. Maybe I don't need the two forces, but also they've got the relic, so maybe Eternal Witness is not that amazing, but I could blow up, I can grab the relic with with deputy. So Um, I've got like all the creatures I need in my hand. I, I don't know if that's what you meant to say. Relic is the pitch. Yeah, I think I'm on board with, with pitching Eternal Witness. We have a four turn clock. If they don't play anything. I think I would cast a force on removal on Skyclave, but they do they need um revolt for that, so they might well they can crack, they can turn on revolt any number of ways. But we do want to be able to recur this ceremonious rejection. We just have to deal with the relic. Alright, so they've got nothing here. Ooh, what? <laughs> that is unlikely. I've only got two of them in the deck. Um, yeah, attack time. Could they have Snapcaster? I have to attack. Um, so, I mean, they could play Damnation, in which case I can pitch a force. Um, I don't really need to leave up double Ceremonious, so getting a creature down here seems okay. Um, maybe I just Deputy the Relic right now. Just get a creature on the board. Maybe they crack it in response. I guess if they have double, if they have another temple in hand, they can cast two inverters next turn, which would feel pretty bad. Murderous cut on that dude. Uh, yeah, that's sort of fine, right? They get a 3-3. Three, three. And they cracked it. Okay. All right. So now uh, Eternal Witnesses can loop uh, the rejections. Opponent on six cards. Why are they doing this? Oh, they're going to crack and scry during... Okay. That's aggressive, I guess. Maybe they don't have the best cards. Maybe they have another Fatal Push that they want to cast. But we did get them to get rid of the Relic, which is a nice... Nice development. Uh, they went top bottom, played a land, and uh, not going for anything here. They're going to attack because I think I'm winning the race either way, really. And cast another Liliana. Are they going to go for? Nope, they're going for, I think, the inverter. So, Ceremonious, where's your Cavern of Souls, man? Get wrecked. So best draw here, um, Eternal Witness, I guess. Close to an Eternal Witness. But I do get redraws. Hmm. It's got green, 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 
blue, blue. Maybe I'll go get another blue. I'm sorry, Derp, what are you saying? You wouldn't, doesn't, what, you wouldn't have played the deputy? The, the point of the deputy was to get rid of the relic. Not really to change my clock. But adding creatures to the board does tend to change the clock. Just, we tend to do it one at a time, you know? Another land, which means I should be able to play another oracle. And I think I'll just hold up Call rather than playing the Ether Vial. The Ether Vial is kind of stupid at this point. Uh, yeah, that's forcible. Or can I just attack it down next turn? Um, they're going to mill themselves. Um, maybe I just attack that down next turn. Do I have any removal in the deck? Maybe I left in like one or two paths. Yeah, I left in two paths. <clears throat> I also can, uh, if I draw an uh, Ephemerate, I can just blink this thing, attack for four, but he's gone up to five, so... <clears throat> I think I'll cast Eladomri's Call and just get a green creature to pitch, or do I just call... I think I just call and blow this guy up with a... Um, with <sighs> Skyclave, right? One has been exiled. I still have another one. Hey, there's the Cavern of Souls. And they, they, they named Wizard. Well, this isn't going to do very much, I don't think. Um... It just digs, basically, right? Well, the Ceremonious Rejection is now offline. They put a card on top of their library. I'm going to mill two cards, which is actually not, not bad for us. Um, so maybe I just call for something big and beefy, or I just go get Deputy to get rid of this illusion. I have Deputy, so that doesn't work, uh, but... Soul Herder. Soul Herder blinks, Deputy gets rid of Jason, and then starts growing. So, <clears throat> well, different strokes for different folks. I have a lot of mana, so I'd prefer to just leave up hardcast um, forces. I like getting Soul Herder down. Thassa does attack. That's a good call. So we can't really kill uh, Jace just yet. No, no Thassa anymore. It's true. Thassa would have been a good one. That was very smart. I don't think about Thassa. So I let me let me finish this up and then I'll uh, <clears throat> finish. Now the thing is, if they have an inverter. I don't think I can win from this spot, right? Um, well, now they need an inverter and then another oracle, right? No, they have they have uh, this thing as a redundant oracle. Um, so I'm attacking in the air. I'm trying to set up a lethal attack here. If I get them down to eight, next turn they go down to six. Um, try to get a big soul herder. I have double force up next turn for what it's worth. And I'm blinking the deputy here to get rid of Jace, at least temporarily. Uh, they could just, they could just, um, push my, oh, but I have force for push, so...
So now I can hard cast force, which I feel much better about. Ah, uh, this is just an inverter. I think we just lose, right? Oh, they didn't cast, they didn't tap Cavern of Souls. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Maybe they have another one just for the sick rub-ins? I do not have double force anymore. I have, oh, they're just remanding it. That's beautiful. All right, remand it. Just gonna cast it again. Uh, wait, they're rem oh, they're remanding the inverter. Um, so I do need to cast this remand. I want my ceremonious to resolve. Oh, it's not a wizard. That's so funny. Um, I don't want them to get the inverter back in hand. Um, I, so I kind of want to keep another force, right? Or do I, which do I pitch? The, I think I just cast, I think I just pitch Uro. I think force is just more important here. So if they remand, they could, they could remand again, but then I would get, okay. So inverter down, very nice. Ugh, land is not very nice. All right. Now, let's say I attack, attack. They block, block, take two more. It's not really, not really worth it. We're just going to keep growing the uh, soul herder, drawing cards. Blinking the deputy doesn't make any sense. So I think I will just crack this to thin my deck. Get Hallowed Fountain tapped and play the Ether Vial. And I guess I'll just blink just a snake at this point. I mean, uh, Kawaddle specifically. Double Force, but I can't cast both of them uh, because I cast an Ether Vial, which is kind of whatever. All right, they found another inverter. They have four in the deck. They're only a third of the way through, and they have three of them. Ugh, that's ridiculous. How do they have three of them? I mean, the clock is kind of my enemy, but I, I feel comfortable with it. Eight minutes is definitely enough. It's a third of my clock, basically, right? So I'm, ba I'm effectively one turn away from, from winning, but now the opponent has a 6-6 six, six flyer, so we might have to start leaving back our snakes. But let's see. I mean, yeah, we don't really have the best attacks, um, but we, we do have good blocks against Inverter. They only have three cards in the library. Uh, and to win, they have to either get a Jace down or find another Thassa's Oracle. What do you got, opponent? Uh, they're killing this thing. Um, I mean, I've got double forces. I mean, I might as well. Mm, no, I think I'm going to count. let that resolve. Because now they could be holding, they, like the last card in their hand could be a Jace, which would just win the game. Uh, they didn't have enough mana to cast Jace, but that's nice. Just deals with their their threat. Grows a Soul Herder, uh, who can now get in. Um, but do I want to let them double block? I don't, don't even kill both of their creatures. Um, attack, they double. If they double block, they don't die yet. Um, Double, double block, take three. But this is super slow. Next turn I can attack and they won't be able to kill the soul herder, which is nice. Blink that snake. I do this so the opponent doesn't know what cards I have. I draw a land, I draw a land. Call is a good one. Well, goodish. I mean, like, they've got two cards in their deck now. Um... They cast Thassa, uh, well, Omen of the Sea. And 
I mean, that's going to draw them a card. So I think I'm going to counter it because I've got two counters. And if they've got like a remand, okay, I just countered it. They've still got two cards left in the deck. They're casting a wizard. It's a Thassa's Oracle, and that's going to win the game, right? Because they had three inverters and two Thassa's Oracles. How does that even work? Like, <laughs> the odds. I don't know, whatever. All right, guys, give me a sec. I'll be right back. I mean, it's not even just creature-based combo. This one in particular is very, very hard to interact with because they just win with two ETB triggers. Uh, so it's not like Devoted Druid where I can just like path it or I can play a Pithing Needle naming Devoted Druid. <clears throat> it's just uh, they get their two ETBs and that's it. So some sideboard tech that can help against this matchup would be to, uh, to have like Mystical Disputes. Um, that's, that's a really nice, well-rounded uh, sideboard card, but I just don't have any uh, right now. Ceremonious Rejections did amazing work. Um, it's a very interesting match, but the opponent... Basically, the reason we lost is the opponent had three inverters in the top 20 cards of their deck. Like, if they had to wait a little bit longer to find their third inverter... Uh, we certainly would have been able to get an Eternal Witness to get back a Ceremonious Rejection and keep uh, sort of shutting them down. Anyhow. <clears throat> I've, <clears throat> I've definitely crushed this matchup before. Uh, I think, you know, they're, it, it's super draw-dependent. Like, they really need to find those combo pieces, and if they don't, you know, they don't win. But they got me there. Okay, the first opponent uh, has two trophies, so pretty nice. Uh, second opponent, the, uh, the guy who might still be with us in chat, um, has three with uh, the amulet deck. And that opponent had two. So in my first uh, three rounds, I guess a total of seven trophies between my opponents. Pretty good. <clears throat> Ahem. <clears throat> 
I've, I've actually played against, I think, this guy, Wef Wefold Bot. There's two. There's Wefold and Wefold Bot. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same person or not. With, like, two different accounts. I think it is, because I think they play, like, very similar decks. Yeah, Meddling Mage, obviously amazing. Um, <clears throat> I think I have, I have to mulligan uh, this. This is almost certainly uh, the Black Red Prowess deck. Uh, it's not the kind of hand that we're looking for. <clears throat> we want a lot of removal. Um, want to get creatures down on the board earlier, and uh, Ether Vial would be pretty awesome, even though they have some number of Colagon's commands. It's a mulligan. Ugh. <sighs> Not the best luck in this league here. And we've been playing some interesting and fun magic, but <clears throat> mulling to five feels bad, man. Well, we get to play Glass Bowl Mimic as a land. That's kind of interesting. And then we have Oracle and Path, and I think we have to keep or uh, Uro ahead of Stonehorn and just hope that we get to, get to sort of recast Uro a bunch of times. <clears throat> I mean, this would be a kind of a, not, a pretty, pretty nice opening seven if it was what we started with. <clears throat> I mean, there's a bunch of lure stacks. It could be any number of things, but the black red one, it could just be regular burn. Ah, black red. A hey, G Force, welcome to the stream. Okay. Hey, well, we got a third land. It means we're going to be able to cast uh, Uro once. Unfortunately, we do have to play this um, tap land first. <clears throat> you know, it's crazy slow. And then, you know, we're going to have to hit ourselves with this windswept teeth. I think I have to get a temple garden. What is their follow-up? No follow-up, come on. <laughs> um, and are now they're going to play a Scourge at like one life and then I can kill it with Uro in two turns from now? Ah, oh, but they're going to hit me for some damage. Okay, it's a 1-1. One -one. I'm trying out one Mimic, yeah. <clears throat> it was clutch against um, Blood Moon in one in one game where I only had a basic island against Blood Moon. I was able to copy a snake and, and draw cards to find an answer to Blood Moon, but I didn't get there. But uh, nevertheless, uh, Glass Pool, uh, it's, it's flexible casting cost with two generic. Um, pretty nice, pretty nice. I've sideboarded it out a bunch. Ether Vial. <clears throat> so now I think I'm going to actually change my intended line and i'm going to instead um the thing is i really want to start escaping uro fast so i can't really get i can't really afford to get basic planes because basic planes like uro even though i can cast uro uh, i can't escape with basic planes so i do need to get uh like green white here no i think i'm going to path uh, one of their creatures but i appreciate the suggestion I think I should be able to... Yeah, but Scourge is going to be a, a, a big... Well, I'm going to gain life, but not that much life. Like, if I go get... If I get a basic planes, I'm going to play... Well, I, I could have taken this line. So they're crashing through here. <clears throat> I'm not sure Uro... With the, with the damage I take from my land. So I play this tapped, I take one from this 18, and potentially kill the Scourge with Uro. So... Could have done it that way, um, but if I if I fetch and shock, I go down to sixteen. Next turn, I go down to f I'm not going to be able to kill the scourge, unfortunately. So I see the value in that line, um, but I was thinking I want to cast path this turn, and so I guess the opponent uh, is 
Inquisition. So they're inquisitioning, <clears throat> and so it's definitely time to uh, to path. Now for the time being, uh, they're getting at me three for this guy. If I go down to 16 and then 14, they're going to hit me down to 13. I'm not going to be able to get over 20 for a little while. Um, so I think I should probably kill the Scourge, because I'm going to start taking a bunch of damage from my lands. I am significantly ahead of the opponent on the clock. <clears throat> and you know, they take whatever they want here. Remember everybody, this is a mulligan to five. Okay, they took the oracle. No attack. Gotta love it. Got to love it. Now call is it call is a good one as well. But I don't see how I don't just cast Uro here. I mean I kind of need to <clears throat> to catch up in uh in cards a little bit. Also gain some life. Otherwise, I mean, what am I calling for? I don't have double white for Skyap yet, though Skyap obviously amazing in the matchup. Uh, we can save Eladamri's call if they don't take it away. Uh, we can eventually get um, just Stonehorn Dignitary. This, to me, it seems like they might have a, cl um, a, a cling since they took away uh, my Oracle and not Uro. But who knows? Who knows? Opponent was f 6 there. So we're actually getting very close to being able to escape Uro with this fetch. That Uro, Uro just drew me. So opponent, obviously a misclick not attacking with the Soul Scar Mage. You guys seem to miss that. <laughs> no. No, no punt mentions or anything. So we got green, green, blue, blue. We definitely want to get white. <clears throat> Maybe a basic is reasonable, but we're three basics away from getting Death Touch, and we don't even have any uh, Kowattles. I want the opponent to go in with their Lava Darts here. <clears throat> or just Bolts, you know? If I draw... Uh, hey, hey, Sess. Welcome to the stream. This dude is in the tank. In the tank. Should I use these lava darts against 1-1 one, one creatures dot deck? Probably shouldn't, but it's hard to resist. So let's see what they do. If I draw a land, I can just <clears throat> call plus just cast sky app. Okay, leaving their spells in hand. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not going to care about death touch right now. I think I'm just going to open up my mana a little bit, bit more. Uh, so just get an, uh, my other green white land. <clears throat> One land away from casting Uro, so a fetch land here would be sensational. <clears throat> Another Uro is also kind of sensational. Um, so yeah, call, call right now doesn't seem awesome. I think just... If I can actually call, if I um, draw green or white source with Uro. So let's cast Uro and see how it goes. Nice. So good. All right. So we still can't escape because we don't have the mana for it, but we can call. So we're just trying to dodge like thought seize right now. Um But if they thought seize us, we can get a snake and just vial it in. And then we draw a card and they take that card, but that that only serves to fuel the Uro. So being at 18 on turn five against this deck always feels pretty good. <clears throat> uh yeah, I don't I don't have COVID. 
<clears throat> I'm sorry. I am coughing a lot. It's not very attractive. Um, I just talk all the time for my job, like all day. And then I finish my job and I come and I talk to you guys. <laughs> Now is the opponent going to go in? Bolt. Three bolts. Jesus, what's happening here? Humor Battle Rage. Am I just losing this? I've got one card left in hand. Going to 16, taking six more. I mean... 15. All right, well, opponent's just getting antsy, I think. Maybe just Eternal Witness is better just to get Path to Exile. That way we've got the Ewit potentially starting to generate value if I draw Ephemerate. So the plan is just I'm calling now. They're thinking if they should cling one of my Uros, but it doesn't really matter. And honestly, I don't know what they're thinking about. They've only got one card in hand. They could push. They could have push. So they crack this and then they push Uro. <clears throat> Or maybe just Eternal Witness getting that call next turn is pretty good. Um, either way, um, Eternal Witness seems pretty good here. But they, uh, they can cling always like in response to me targeting with Eternal Witness, but let's see how it goes. I have a feeling they've got a fatal push in hand. Didn't really need to leave the other Uro, but <clears throat> it's just so good in the matchup. I can actually cast the Eternal Witness now, but that's a little silly. Okay, so yeah, no reason for me to uh, blink first here. So two Uros has felt pretty good. Uh, this was one of the matchups where um, I, I was thinking uh, particularly about how much Uro helps it. So the opponent has conceded. So we're up a game. Worship is awesome. Veil vale is awesome. Path and this entire next column is pretty much awesome. Um, oh, opponent! Opponent just abandoned ship. <laughs> I'm sorry, opponent. I didn't didn't mean to hurt your feelings like that. Is that is that how we spell this guy's name? Just put a bunch of S's. See what comes up. Nothing. Now, okay, so we, once again, we find ourselves in a very familiar uh, position, being two and two going into the last round of a league. I, I kind of like that the opponent, uh, opponent just scooped. That's what you missed. So they didn't, um, they didn't think they had any chance, I guess. And <clears throat> Uro, Uro is a pretty um, spirit breaking card pretty um there's a word for that <laughs> just need to use my brain all right Cespen. uh thanks very much and uh i'll do my best disheartening oro is a pretty disheartening card ah this is slow but it's slow we don't know what we're playing against but we've got we've got oro We've got Sky, Sky Up, we've got lands to cast spells. I think I'll, I'll keep this and we'll just get run over and see how it goes. Uh, looks like maybe Jund. Oh, this is a good hand against Jund. Hmm. 
I try to play fast, currently three seconds ahead of the opponent. A basic forest. So maybe it's just uh, Blood Moon again. Oh, I should have thought about that. Oh, oh no. I don't want to get Blood Mooned. Oh god, it's just Titan. It's just another Titan deck. <laughs> I'm so dead. Guys, why do I have this bad luck? It's like old, old school scape shift. Can't even do anything against this deck. Maybe just gain like tons and tons of life so that we get outside of like scape shift range. Uh, drawing a two drop there is pretty interesting. So, and now I just pass the turn. Ah, scape shift of all things. It's not Blood Moon, and it looks like they might be missing lands, or maybe they forgot to sack their, their Tribe Elder. That's kind of weird. They're missing land drops. Guys, they're missing land drops. This is like one of the very, very, very few ways that we can actually compete here. Why would you, yeah, why would you not cast that? Oh, they have a land. What are they? The opponent is playing all sorts of backwards here. Um, anyhow, um, seems like green white would be meaningful uh, to get a second white source. So I guess I'll do it, but I, again, the plan, I think, is just to gain tons and tons of life. They could untap, play a land, and cast um, Titan next turn, which is no, no two ways about it. That's pretty rough. I don't even know really what I want to get here. Um, we've got one half of the um, Eternal Witness Stonehorn loop, but they're going to get Valakit soon, and we're just going to die to Valakit. So, I don't even know, guys. I don't even know. Maybe we go for forces to try to counter scape shifts, and we get, like, Watcher for Tomorrow here, and then keep blinking Watcher for Tomorrow with Soul Herder. This is, I don't know. Like, I have to hope that they don't have the Titan in hand, and that we can just force, um, that we can force their, like, Summoner's Packs. Yeah, so I'm going to get Watcher for tomorrow. It's kind of a weird grab, but it's what we've got to do. So I think I just open with Watcher here, hold up Ephemerate, and then the following turn. Oh, well, I drew a Force. That changes my sequencing a little bit. So now maybe I just play Uro to draw cards. Um, but Watcher plus Ephemerate still seems pretty good. Um, Watcher hold up Ephemerate. Yeah, I'm, I'm still going to do it, I think. <laughs> yeah. And we'll get to Uro if we get to Uro. I, we're just going to lose to Valakit. So I don't think that Stonehorn is very relevant. I do think maybe that this land is relevant, and I can just try to Ephemerate right now and, and get blown out by... Um... Oh, I played my land already, though, so we passed the turn. And yeah, we're going to hold up, I guess at this point, just Soul Herder pitching to force if they have Summoner's Pact rather than just Titan. Because if they have Titan, I think it's just game over. Ah, uh, so boring. Stupid card. Okay. I want Primeval Titan to get banned. I'm in the minority, but pretty dumb. Yeah. 
Field of the Dead, and a counter spell. All right, well, not going straight for Valakit, though they could have the Dryad in hand. <clears throat> Ephemerate this guy. More lands, I guess? I mean, this is pretty awkward. All right, so we've got lands for a little while now. We have N Uro. I think another force is probably better. And card for the turn is a Teferi, which lets me bounce Primeval Titan and draw a card. Um, letting them recast Primeval Titan seems pretty stupid, but um, not a lot to be done about it. I can go get green mana, cast Eternal Witness, get Ephemerate. To take a bunch of damage next turn. Um, obviously, deputy is clutch at this point, but I... Oh, there's a call in the graveyard, so I can call for deputy, but not this turn. Um, but I can call this turn, cast deputy next turn. So I think for now, I th just want to... Uh, well, I have to think carefully. If I want to get call, if I, w I have to do it now, and then I can call, like, plus to fairy next turn or something. Um, you get white with this one, um, or blue with this one, I guess blue, and then we can get Canopy Vista this, the following turn. Okay, <laughs> so weird that they're not tapping Cavern of Souls there. There you go. Okay. Uh, well, are they? Are we scape shifting now? They floated all their mana, and then they have only four left. That's weird. Oh, they can cast it twice. They can cast. They just have double scape shift. That's fun. Oh, wait. Oh, there's another force under this guy. Ugh. So they have double scape shift and Titan. That's nice. <laughs> if I had another Ephemerate, we could, ca we could counter double scape shifts, but I don't have another Ephemerate. And now scape shift. Scape shift. Hey, no, no double scape shift. <laughs> I can dig it. Teferi will will fall. Um, but yeah, this is working out better than I could have hoped. I guess <laughs> still super dead, but just doing my best. Ephemerate is is cool. We were just talking about that. But we're still just going to die to Valakit. They currently only have three mountains, but um, Titan can get more mountains. Uh, Uro gains life. We can start that plan. I can, I can go get my um, Canopy Vista, like I was talking about. And we do want to get Call back here, I think. So get back Call. I have to cast it next turn. Just hold up Ephemerate. I 
I think like the thing is like we just can't stop the Titan, right? So if they had Scape Shift, we could stop Scape Shift. If they had, I don't know, like the Dryad, we could just kill the Dryad. But they have the Titan, and that that's just gonna make it a little bit too hard for us. All right, so here, here's the big guy again. Probably just going to get mountains, maybe, an, maybe a Valakid and a mountain, who knows. Or maybe they just cast a, uh, well, there's the Titan, yeah. We knew that was in their hand. Uh, so what did they get? They got two mountains. So now they have one, two, three, four, five. So future subsequent mountains will will get us. They'll get us good. Teferi can bounce Primeval Titan again, but I guess now at this point, I don't even know, guys. Uh, maybe we just want to call for... <clears throat> I mean, I don't, I don't know how, um, how exciting it is for you guys, like watching me lose very slowly, because that's that's definitely what's happening here. So if we draw land, we can call for Stonehorn. Which, which seems good, but then they just kill it with their Valakit triggers, so. They played another field. Okay. Oh, well, we drew land. So we can do what I said we would do. And we can prevent them from attacking for the rest of the game, but they're just going to dome me. Like, they play a land, they dome me. They get two lands with Primeval Titan, and they dome me. So, <clears throat> yep, yep, that is the situation. So, um, I can deputy the Primeval Titan, then we die to zombies. Um... Venser sort of helps these weird, uh, difficult matchups. It helps them a little bit, but only in like niche situations. For example, if I cast Venser and had Soul Herder out here, <clears throat> I could just start bouncing a bunch of lands. Um, it's just unfortunate I haven't drawn like a single path because just dealing with Primeval Titan would be pretty good. Um, we can see what he does with the Valakit triggers. I can't cast like a deputy at instant speed. That doesn't work. Um, can't cast Uro and escape him unless I hit a land. That would gain six life. Um, it would also put up a big creature to block from Evil Titan. Uh, <clears throat> so go to 15. I think that might let me w uh, not die. Skyclave doesn't do anything here. Because uh, Primeval Titan is too high of a CMC. So we're hoping to draw a land here, and then we'll escape Uro, and we'll go up to 14 life. Oh my god, I drew the only land in my deck that can't cast Uro. Um, so I guess I get a redraw by ephemerating Uro. Or, did I play a land drop yet? I think I did. I did. I played Misty this turn. Um, so I do need to hit Uro one more time. Um, I was going to say I could ephemerate Eternal Witness 
and then play another land, but I can't play another land. I need I need the land to be put into play through Uro. No, but I just played the land. I played the uh I have to play it when when it asks us to. Oh god, wait. I could have done it. I, wait, 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 wait. I could have done that. I could I'm so I'm a little bit silly here. It lets us put a land in, so I should have eph ephemerated using one of these. No, but then I'm using mana that I need to escape Uro. Um, so I don't, I don't think that I, that would have gotten me there. All right, so we need a forest or uh, an island here. Um, so do I get another chance at this now? Oh, no, it asks me right now if I want to. This is so weird. Yeah, I don't think I can do it anymore, but I can keep gaining life. Which seems okay. Okay-ish, right? <laughs> ah, deck. Have to sacrifice Uro three times. Uh, we play Soul Herder. And then still lose very slowly. All right. So uh, I think the best thing to get back is probably, I don't even know. <laughs> like we get back Uro, cast it, and escape it. Um, maybe Ephemerate is the best thing to get back. I don't even know. This is weird. I think I need to gain a lot of life. So I'm going to get Uro back. <laughs> Now I can I can cast because I played like four lands that turn or something. I I think I'm just dead to the trample of all this damage. They're gonna throw six at my face. I go to eleven. Uh, block three of these things. I take four. That's eight. Plus six is fourteen. Uh, yeah, force is not helping us here. But I did get something blue. That was a fun turn, at least. We had, we had a chance to escape Uro. Oh, they're just killing my creatures? That's fun. Uh, so then I block one of these. I take six. I think I don't just die here. Take eight. Yeah, maybe I live. They just need to play a land to not. <clears throat> am I am I dead? Six plus twelve. Yeah, oh, six plus twelve. I am dead. I'm dead to eighteen. All right, we did our best. <laughs> Paired against Titan twice. So worship is a thing. It's not, not a super great thing, but we can ephemerate in response to them trying to kill our creatures. Uh, path is okay-ish. Wind is okay-ish. Ethergust. Force to counter their scape shifts. Ashiok. Ashiok the all-star. Okay, it's one Ashiok. That's uh, two Ashioks. Uh, we can take out... Th Skyclave seems poor. Stonehorn seems poor-ish. Doesn't die to one trigger. Uh, mm, and yeah, Oriok's not great because Valakit is colorless. Um, not sure how important Glass Pool is. Teferi was kind of stupid. Um... We're not really, really for, uh, searching for particular creatures, I think, so I can just trim to calls. And um, I'm going to submit and then just uh, jog to the bathroom real quick. Actually, I've got this. Hang on.
Okay. <clears throat> Thassa is super slow. Um, I think maybe... Soul Herder dies very easily, but whatever. It's such a crappy matchup. Honestly, I think the only way that we can make this matchup even a little bit better is just to pack like four, uh, four Ether Gusts and four Ashiox or something. Like in my build, I'm not even ramping, so Ashiok doesn't come down until turn three, which is super slow. I'm going to keep this because it does Soul Herder things. I should probably mulligan to Ashiok, but honestly, guys, I'm like full on whatever mode here. I, this is this is a, this is a mulligan. It should have been a mulligan, particularly when I've got <clears throat> critical sideboard hate. But let's see how the deck draws. It has a counter spell. It has a card draw spell. It has lands. It has an ether vial. Um, we don't run blue. We're not going to get mystical disputed or anything. Just pass the turn. Gotta hold these forces for scape shift. I can't counter any ramp. <laughs> okay, that's not the best spell with Valakid on the battlefield. Getting in there. Getting in there. We've got our clock established. Maybe they'll go for a bolt and I'll ephemerate and we'll pull ahead. <clears throat> All right. Uh, if you guys didn't notice, they had uh, suspended a second search. Uh, the first one is going to come off here, and as I mentioned, I can't really afford uh, to counter any of their ramp. So two of our losses in this league were to Titan decks. Um, the other one was to an inverter combo deck, uh, and we were not really equipped sideboard-wise to deal with that deck. Um, so it's just three crazy bad matchups um <clears throat> against against black red prowess we just uh we broke them they uh they scooped after game one they scooped the whole match um relic relic is whatever you got it it's modern inverter combo not pioneer uh, I'm going to pay the life, and I'm going to ephemerate now because, you know, if you've got a bolt, let me see it. <laughs> Three ether vials. Let's get that fourth ether vial. Ether vial Tron assembled. Unfortunately, this slows my clock uh, down from an 18 turn clock to a 19 turn clock. Oh, they just cracked it right now. That's funny. Uh, solar, uh, yo! <laughs> Those were some draws. Am I going to win a game just to drag this out unnecessarily? All right, well, we hit a Valakit. That's cool. Can't not play Soul Herder here. Those are some power draws right there. Soul Herder into Ashiok. Or Ashiok into Soul Herder. All right, all right. I mean... <laughs> now we have removal for, for a 6-6, six, six, uh, for a Colossal Dreadmaw, right? So Hoodrat, uh, it's interesting. Uh, I know Inverter Combo was like a menace. Oh, th th I prevented them from searching. Did you guys see that? Are you guys on top of this? 
they couldn't resolve that search for tomorrow. That's sick. Uh, so anyhow, I was saying, I know it was a menace and it got banned from uh, Pioneer. Oh my god, I want a game. That's amazing. <laughs> that's, that's more than I could ask for. And uh, hopefully you guys find it entertaining because this is not the most entertaining matchup. Um, but what I was saying is that inverter combo has kind of always been a thing in modern as well. Um, it's just been like, you know, tier, tier four or whatever. If you guys want to Google um, my my fourth, um, what was his name? Something bot, uh, Weefald bot. If you want to go look up Weefald bot and and just Weefald without the bot, so two different two different users. They should both have some trophies, um, and they they play they played Inverter in Modern for a long time, um, and I believe they have some trophies with it if I'm not mistaken. Jesus, that was awesome. I, and it was on the back of that hand that I maybe I should have mulliganed. Huh. That, that changes things. I have, to, I have to actually try now. Do I want to do anything differently? Uh, W-E-F-A-L-D. And then it's W E F A L D bot with just just all one word. Thassa seems real bad, doesn't she? I feel like they have to play dryads, so let's bring in Knight instead of Thassa. Just blow up some dryads. I mean, if I'm remembering this correctly, I could totally be misremembering. I know for a fact that I played against that Weefault guy before, and I'm pretty sure they were on the inverter combo back then, because I googled their name, and I found that weird situation where there was a Weefault and then a, uh, a Weefault bot. Who knows? Whoa. I mean, opponent starting with 7, we do not have Ashiok. We have turn 1 Aether Vial, turn 2 Oracle, calls for like nothing we've got the worship which means if we can draw ephemerates to protect our creatures could be okay yeah i'll keep this whatever let's do this we kept this hand last game we're keeping this hand this game this hand is lacking in counter spells that is an ephemerate pretty nice um let's just get basic green here Okay, so we're, we're on track to cast uh, turn two Coiling Oracle. Uh, Aladomri's calls can go get deputies, right, to, uh, to blow up uh, their zombies, kill their zombies. Do they have a nature's claim? Don't have a nature's claim. Okay, looks like they don't have a nature's claim. Okay, Farseek getting their ramp on. We need, we need, like, a land, maybe two lands. There it is. There it is. Okay. All right, guys, we're trying to hang in there. Ashiok, let's go. Oh, force. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this is, like, such a precarious situation. We got mana to cast force. Just need to get an Ashiok down. Oh my god, opponent's got nothing right now. <sighs> mm, another force. We definitely have to play this untapped. And then we have to attack. And yeah, we're just holding up our mana, right? I mean, we've got all sorts of stuff up. We've got force, ephemerate, Eladomri's call. Would love to get an Ashiok down. Got one more turn to do that. Two Ashioks in the deck. One with the tap stomping ground. Sweet Jesus. I can draw an Aether Gust. I think I have to go for, um, man, I think I have to go for the Ephemerate. I think that card draw is more important here. Like, I can, I can, Eladomri's call for land, but it comes in tapped. Worship, 
not necess not necessary to slam next turn. Um, wish I could call man if I could call for um, even mind sensor that would be awesome, but I don't have it in the deck. So I think I'm just trying to dig here, and the opponent hasn't spent any bolts yet. Um, so if I'm trying to dig, maybe I just go find a soul herder, right? Violin soul herder next turn. We still got force up. Opponent's F6, which is very interesting. I think Soul Herder is probably the way to go here. I clicked, it's resolved, and we go to our draw. Okay, so yes. Okay, removal. Removal is a thing. Come on, let's go. Land, please. Okay, okay. So now we could call, I could go get, um, I could, okay, I can cast Ephemerate and call now, and force. Man, where's my Ether Gust? Oh, Summoner's Pact. Yes. So I think I have to just force this. Just hard cast force. I'm not going to call this turn, but that's sort of okay. I could pitch the force and leave up mana, but uh, maybe like Eternal Witness getting back a force or something, but uh, I... Another summer is packed. Um, so I can now ephemerate and try to look for a blue card to pitch. Maybe I should have done this reversed. Um, but he's gonna go get um, Titan, play Titan. They have the, they played a land already this turn, so they can only put two things in. So they can't get like Valakit plus Mountain and get a whole bunch of triggers. So. Um, so maybe I just, I try to, I think I'm going to Coiling Oracle anyway. They got one, two, three, and a whole four. Yeah, they can cast the Titan. I kind of want to counter this though. Um, I don't think, unless they, they didn't have a bolt, so they, they can't get Valakit triggers this turn. Unless I'm being dumb. Am I being dumb? They're going to get Titan. They're going to get two lands. They're going to enter tapped. If he gets two mountains, there's no Valakits. If he gets Valakit plus a mountain, there's only five mountains. Now, casting Ephemerate is a little bit risky because I like Ephemerate to protect from future, um, future Valakit triggers. I gotta play a little faster though. Well, we didn't hit exactly what we wanted, but now we're done for the turn. Um, I can call for Eternal Witness to get back um, Ephemerate. Soul Herder is going to grow outside of the the single Valakit range. Oh, they just got a Cavern of Souls. Interesting. And and like a forest. I think they just got a forest. That's weird. So I, of course, um, Ashiok off the top is always still very good. I'm going to catch the rebound here on this Oracle.
They're going to have to pay the Summoner's Pack next turn. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Night of Autumn is also sort of okay. Okay, so we've got at instant speed call. Um, I think I'll upkeep path this guy. Actually, you know what? Maybe I'll just path him now. I think I'm just going to path him now and then attack. Like, I'm going to be the beatdown, I think. And remember, he has to pay the... Um, the Summoner's Pack next turn. I don't have a blue card to pitch, but of course I can call for it if I want to. Um, which is just to say, do I play Worship now? And, and I think the answer is I do not want to play Worship now. Call for Eternal Witness for whatever in the graveyard is going to be good, I think. We've also got Force Up. He tries like an Anger of the Gods plus a Bolt or something. Alright, so it looks like the max he'll have is 4 mana here. Which, if they have that stupid Ramp Land... Um, they could cast another Titan right now. Okay. Escape Shift A. Guys, I'm winning. I am gonna win. I'm going to vial in Knight as a 4 power creature. That's 10, and then I'm going to get... Um, oh, wait, maybe maybe not quite yet. Maybe not quite yet. Um, oh, can I blink anything right now? I don't think so. Um, so let's just... Okay, hang on. Let's think very carefully. I'm definitely calling here. <clears throat> Eternal Witness getting back force seems quite good, I think. Um, but I can put Knight in now. Eter hang on. Eternal Witness. Oh, well, no, because she can't attack then. Well, no, I can do this. I can, uh, I can do this. I'm going to get Eternal Witness. Yeah, yeah. So we do, and then and then Ewit blinks herself. So this is eleven. This is this is ridiculous. Yeah, that was always the idea, but I was getting hung up on the fact that if I blink something, it takes power out of the. Um, the attack, but I can, of course, just blink the Eternal Witness. Or path the Eternal Witness if I absolutely needed to. Aw, oh, man. Soul Herder for the clutch win. Soul Herder itself. Soul Herder the card. Soul Herder the legend. Coming through like a champion. Boom! <laughs> Guys, look, that to me is like, that's almost as valuable as just like 5 0 or something. That's just ridiculous. I love it. Ah, <laughs> uh, ah, uh, beaten one of the stupidest decks in the format. Yes. <laughs> wow. Night of Autumn coming through with like the stupidest mode, you know? The, the plus two counters. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to bring back that. I'm just going to look through that again. You guys are free to just head out if you want to, but <laughs> I'm going to watch that replay because that was sick.
All right, now just leave it on play for the time being. So it was a pretty nice Soul Herder hand to open up. Opponent was not super fast. They didn't suspend any search for tomorrows or anything. Uh, yeah, so we're going to crack that, get a forest. Ether Vile, forest. So both of us got snow-covered forests there. Farseek, pretty basic, but, you know, not really threatening me in any way. It's kind of one of the things about this deck. Drew a land right on time. That was clutch. I did have, like, you know, another turn maybe, but... Having an extra land in hand to know that I'm hitting my land drops was, like, pr pretty key here. Um, drew, the, drew the counter spells, which were actually pretty relevant. Um, passed with three instant speed spells up. Opponent had nothing with four mana, which was obviously very helpful. Um, I cast Eladamri's Call there for Soul Herder. Um, and Soul Herder actually, let me pause it for a second. Soul Herder ended up being uh, a really, really good call. Um, like, literally, with Eladamri's Call. Because Soul Herder was like our biggest attacker by far. I would have had definitely another turn on the clock uh, if I hadn't gotten Soul Herder. So good job, Soul Herder. I mean, part of the idea was just to blink the Oracle and try to hit lands, right? Um, and we did. So the deck just like really had our back here. So we, we countered the first uh, Summoner's Pact. Opponent got to six mana. They have a second Summoner's Pact. Now, if I pause for a second, do we think if they had, if we didn't have any forces uh, and the opponent just resolved the first Summoner's Pact, they would have cast the Titan, gotten their lands going, and then they could have used the second Summoner's Pact to get like a Dryad, um, turning all of their lands into mountains, and then I would have probably just gotten smoked. So, um... So being able to force even one of the Summoner's Packs, probably pretty clutch, I think. The fact that they had two, you know, is great for them, but the fact that I was able to counter the first one was still very meaningful, I think. Okay, so we see the, the Titan, and he got, let's see, he, I think he only got a Cavern of Souls, if I'm not mistaken. I can't do a, I can't do a rewind on this, but I'm pretty sure that they had... Yeah, they did, for sure. They only had six lands, and they only got one. So it's like a misclick, right? You can search your library for up to two. Maybe the opponent thought that they had clicked two lands. And so what a punt. Like, they could have um, gotten Field of the Dead or something, you know? And Field of the Dead, if we look, it would be one, two, three, four, five. It wouldn't be online quite yet. So I, um, I think I, that I caught the rebound just then, right? Through a path, which is pretty nice. I also had the wins um, to be able to just deal with the Primeval Titan. I made the right choice pathing on the main phase uh, just to get in my attacks. Uh, in hindsight, very clearly the correct decision, I think. So, I'd love at this point to have uh, like Ephemerate to be able to protect creatures against Valakid triggers, but they're not super duper close to Valakid triggers, and remember that on their next turn they're going to have to pay the Summoner's Pact, right? So uh, blinking this Oracle is just like such value, hitting lands like nonstop. So like pausing for a second, uh, I have to say that you know you have games where you draw way too many lands, and you have games where you draw way too few lands. Like this game was just like like Chef's Kiss as far as drawing lands like at the right time like oracle is pushing them out onto the battlefield have not missed a land drop on my side of the board um i think i i think i kept a two lander with ether vial in this game and i hit my first six land drops it's pretty awesome so definitely needed the deck to uh cooperate here on it with a four mana casting the scape shift uh which would have been let's see if i gain four life and go up to 20 they're scape shifting with eight lands, which uh, you guys should probably know the math. Uh, at eight lands, they can get two Valakits and six mountains, uh, which actually produces uh, two, uh, <laughs> six triggers times two, right? Which is 12 triggers, which is 36 damage. So even um, even violing in Night of Autumn, like if they had seven lands and scape shift, um, violing in Night of Autumn, gaining four, would put me outside of lethal because um, 
seven lands is just one Valakit with six mountains, and that's just six triggers instead of 12 triggers, and six triggers is 18 damage. So um, this was absolutely lethal. Um, so having this extra force uh, in hand just really, really, really good. And then just sets up the the sort of very, very mechanically... Uh, interesting lethal attack, right? So Knight of Autumn does not come in uh, very often against anybody to just be a, a, a beater, <laughs> but it's coming in here now as a four power creature. You can see even with that, I'm one point away. We think, how do we do that? Well, it's what our deck does. <laughs> we get we get value for blinking creatures. Soul Herder gets to get bigger, and uh, yeah, the rest was history. So what a game! What a game! Remember, opponent played super slow. Uh, they didn't do really much of anything in the first few turns, but they chose to keep their hand, you know? And we just did our best. Eternal Witness, get back Ephemerate for Exaxes. Oh, it's delicious. I need to, like... I don't even know. I guess this is going to be saved for posterity, like, because I'm going to upload this to YouTube, like, with all my other streams. Uh, but yeah, that I mean... Oh, it's so good. I'm so glad that I could end the stream, like... I was I was pretty down. You guys heard me at first. Like we got paired against old school scape shift, which is super difficult. Um, was just ready to just uh, get crushed, but like we somehow magically got game two and three. Games two and three. Like in game two and three, we we drew running soul herder and Ashiok, which is just fantastic. Uh, and this game, we, the forces I have to say were probably the the all stars here. Like if we were unable to stop their spells, we would have just lost. We would have lost to titan and then dryad uh and then scapeshift so um everybody doing their part for sure land doing their part etherball doing their part but really uh we wouldn't have won without force so force mvp and with that yeah another three two um hopefully one day we'll we'll do a little better um i'll just end the stream on a shot of the um the deck you guys can ask any questions uh you might have Glass Pool Mimic, we, we, we played it twice, I think, this game. We played it once as a land. Uh, so in that instance, it, it would have just been better as... Oh my goodness, that was like... <laughs> jarring. Um, in one instance, uh, Glass Pool would have just been better as a regular land. Um, in another instance, we only had Blue Mana because of Blood Moon, and Glass Pool actually let us cast it for that reason. So still definitely more testing to be done with Glass Pool. I have to say that um, taking out a Basic Planes and replacing it with Glass Pool, I didn't feel disadvantaged during the league. So I don't feel like, you know, it was a failed experiment and I have to revert to 21 lands immediately, right? So um, Gallows Humor subscribing at Tier 1, that's amazing. Uh, thanks so much uh, for the subscription. It means a lot. Um, so glad that you guys uh, joined me for these streams. It's such a sweet deck. Um, but when we get paired against things like Inverter Combo and two Primeval Titan decks, you know, we have to really fight hard uh, to, to even 3-2, you know? So Gallows Humor with, with the three months of subscription. Uh, again, super appreciated. Uh, so do you guys have... Now, Gallows, um, I, I've got the deck here. Maybe you want... Maybe you're looking at um, Cardboard Live over there. Uh, it's also, uh, you can find the, the deck, uh, there's a link up here in the pins. Uh, it's this, this one is the current one. I just updated it before the stream. So if any of you guys are interested in the deck list and just like downloading it and playing with it, uh, you can find like the goldfish link in the discord. So yeah, anyhow, before I wrap things up, does anybody have any questions? Um, because yeah, Hood Rat, that was that was such a that was such a good match. That was a, one of my favorite matches in a long time. Like last night, I got paired against uh, Lantern Control and Humans, and I I completely steamrolled Lantern, and I beat Humans, getting uh, like the Stonehorn Lock in two games. But you know, steamrolling an opponent is satisfying in a way, but it's it's not the same as overcoming like possibly our literal worst matchup. Um, and beating humans with the Stonehorn Lock, again, while satisfying, it's something that I've done a dozen times at this point, if not more. So, um, and then the wins, the wins that we had earlier in this league were okay, you know, uh, but, but that one, that one takes the cake. Uh, good question. Hoodrat, uh, absolutely. 
So Hoodrat, I guess, um, are you in the, first of all, are you in the Discord? Um, because uh, if you're not, you should be. Uh, and I can hook you up with links to, well, first of all, in the pins up here, if you guys are unfamiliar, um, I've got my primer, which I've spent many, many hours on. I have not, not recently. I have to update it. Um, but it's pretty up to date. I have a like a history of the um, a history of the deck, including like notable notable tournament wins or tournament uh, results, um, examples of different types of decks, like decks that run Vile, decks that run Urian, um, decks that run Red Splash, decks that run Black Splash, um, and Hoodrat. If you Google my username M underscore Joe, um, you will see uh, my magic online results and I've got four trophies with um with Soul Herder and at least one if not two of them had my black splash with Seedra. I believe it's at least two of my my five O's. Maybe even three uh had the black splash because uh Siege Rhino is quite a card and I really like it. I used to play um things like Assassin's trophies, but particularly with uh Skyclave Apparition in the deck now, uh, we don't really, if you do splash a, a fourth color, like black in this case, you don't want to, um, you don't want to lean too hard on that splash. Like at the end of my black splash, I, I literally just had like one, C oh, I can show you guys here, I think. Um, let's see, 60 Herder, early July, what is this one? So here, here's one of those decks, right? So I had Siege Rhino, and a hostage taker, and that was the only black in all the 75 cards. And that's kind of how you want it to be. You run birds as an extra four black sources. You run overgrown tomb as as you know just a single black source in your mana base that can be fetched with eight of your fetches between Misty's and Windswept Heaths. Uh, and then then you're covered to cast these two spells. But if you have like a bunch of assassins trophies. Now all of a sudden, you've only got like one black source on the table. You want to cast Siege Rhino, you want to cast Assassin's Trophy, and you just can't do everything you need to do with the black mana. So um, so if you do want to do a black splash, I really, if you haven't tried it before, I really encourage it. Siege Rhino is such a blast to play with. Um, just killing opponents, like by casting a Siege Rhino and then double ephemerating, that's, it's three damage, six damage, nine damage with two ephemerates, and then you catch the two rebounds. Uh, so then 12 and 15 damage. So just like a, a 30 point life swing between dealing 15 and gaining 15 just from like Siege Rhino and one Ephemerate. Even just Siege Rhino and two Ephemerates, but even Siege Rhino and one Ephemerate is, can be pretty backbreaking. So that's six damage and six life gain up front. And then of course the rebound does another three. Uh, I've closed out many, many games with Siege Rhino. Uh, so then to talk about the Red Splash, uh, I'm not sure that I have any of my old red decks uh in here still maybe with soul yeah not really um but the red splash is actually one of the more famous versions of soul herder because um a really popular streamer named aspiring spike as soon as urian came out literally on the day that urian was legal uh in the format he played an 80 card soul herder deck running four um avalanche riders uh and so the plan was just blow up lands and, and get value, right? And um, so he 5 would with that deck on the day that Urian was released. And uh, while Urian was legal, uh, sorry, before the companion rule was changed, two Urian decks, two Urian Soul Herder decks made it to one, made it to the same top eight of a modern challenge. Uh, one of them was CFT SOC3. He was on uh, Ether Vial. Ether Vial with Call, and I don't think he was running red for Avalanche Riders. Um, but at that point, he was running that new, like, I was a Dranith Magistrate as sideboard tech. Um, and that actually came in pretty clutch, I think, in some of the games I saw. Um, Dranith, I think it's just Magistrate. Let me just type the whole thing. And the other one was Nasif. So we had literally two... Uh, <laughs> Two Soul Herder decks in one top eight of a modern challenge. That's how good Urian was uh, before the before the companion nerf. Why am I not finding Dranith Magistrates? Just spelling it wrong, I guess, or something. Let me just type in Magistrate. Uh, 
Oh, there's an I in Drenith. So yeah, I remember CFT was on this guy, and he pl and he violated in again. I think so. CFT and Nasif on the two Soul Herder decks got paired against each other in the quarterfinals, uh, which was which was pretty ugly. Um, and Nasif ended up winning, but in that match, uh, <laughs> in that match, CFT brought in Dranith Magistrate, so your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands, which obviously shuts off your opponent's companion, which is pretty cool. This guy was kind of a big deal pre-companion um, pre nerf because companions were so busted. Like, Luris was breaking the format in, in a million pieces, and, uh, and Urian was also um, showing indications that he was pretty busted. So um, Dranith Magistrate is going to um, prevent the companions from being cast. Uh, and it's funny because this actually doesn't stop companion now, right? Because you put the creature into your hand and then you cast it. Um, but this does stop, um, like, Uro escaping, right? Um, it doesn't stop that much anymore, so it's probably never going to see that much play anymore, but it's just a bit of history. Um, and it's another point just to say, if you guys want to um, read up uh, on some of the options in Soul Herder, uh, you should really check out the Discord and, uh, and, and check out my primer. Uh, it's like 20 pages long or something, maybe more than that now. Um, and, you know, there's a bunch of different options uh, for budget. Alicia has a really cool uh, approach with, with, like, Tide Hollow, uh, Tide Hollow whatever. <laughs> Tide Hollow Sculler. What a weird word, Sculler. And, um, and all well, the Strangle comes from uh, Wasteland Strangler. So those kinds of synergies, those kinds of Eldrazi and Taxes synergies, uh, she's got that in, like, a Soul Herder deck, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then you've got some of the older CFT lists uh, that you guys could check out. Uh, but let's see if there's any more comments in here. Uh, what about your Ryan as a companion? Uh, <laughs> you say you say the plus extra twenty extra cards like it's a bonus. Like playing twenty extra cards is not a bonus. Um, there are some cards in the deck that are just extraordinary like ephemerate and when you start playing 80 cards uh you really start diluting uh the likelihood of actually drawing those clutch cards um and so somebody asked me um so yes uh so some people are running orion it's not that it's unplayable it's just that whenever i've tried orion in soul herder after the uh after the companion nerf I just found, like, in every single game, I was never paying the three mana to get Urian in hand and never casting her. So it's just like, at a certain point, the 20 cards just felt like um, an unnecessary, like, unbeneficial, um, actually detrimental sort of burden on the deck. So I think 60 cards, you can really tune your list um, and draw the cards that you want to draw more often. No, I mean, as far as what the deck wants to do, we've got we've got a lot of tools, and we really just filled a void with Skyclave. Like, Skyclave does so much for the deck right now. So, um, as far as unfair things, there's always the option of splashing red and running Kiki Jiki um, and Restoration Angel. So, Restoration Angel is just a blink piece anyway, right? So, you flicker one of your creatures, and or blink one of your creatures with Restoration Angel and you get value that way. Uh, so pretty good by itself. Rest, uh, Kiki Jiki, pretty good by itself as well. The problem is that your splash color is now it red. You Now you have a card that's like triple red to cast. So it becomes a Court of Calling build where you hope to never draw Kiki Jiki and um, just be able to cord for him so you don't have to actually use red mana. Um, so back, and actually this is getting us back, well, I haven't thought about this stuff in a while, this is getting us back to the days of Arkham's Astrolabe, when our mana was like perfect, and you could play five color Soul Herder if you wanted to. Um, so back with Astrolabe, like Blood Moon didn't exist at all, so you just like completely gratuitous with the mana base. And if you felt like running Siege Rhino and Avalanche Riders and Kiki Jiki all in the same deck, you know, you could go for it, but... Uh, Wizards finally realized that Astrolabe is probably one of the stupidest cards that they ever actually printed. <laughs> like, ugh, it's just a, like boggles the mind to think how they could conceive of that card being a good idea. 
Uh, but yeah, Time Warp is a combo. Time Warp is pretty sick. Um, but Hood Rat's question was if there's anything missing. There's nothing missing that I can think of, honestly. And if you ask, like, to design a card, you guys did this, like, at the end of... Maybe it was Hood Rat again at the end of the last stream. Like, if you could design an ETB creature for the deck, like, how would you design it? Like, make it the most busted thing you could think of. It's really different than, like, thinking of a good merfolk. Like, for example, like, a merfolk, you could just make, like, a Flash Lord, and that's, like, all of a sudden, like, insane, right? Because, um, like, the combat tricks would be bonkers. Um... Any kind of flash creature with like protection for your creatures would be nice, but with um, with Soul Herder, yeah, yeah. I mean that kind of that would be that would be a good one. I like that one. One white flash two two. <laughs> it's a little bit busted, but uh, it would probably have to be uh, blink a creature you control. Otherwise, it'd be a little bit too pushed. But I'm not complaining if it says blink another creature. Uh, maybe if it's just white white, make it a little more restrictive. Um, white white flash blink another creature i can dig it seems pretty good let's give it flying while we're at it seems like a flying creature right uh but that is is that just strictly better than flicker wisp it's getting close to it maybe it needs to be like a one two flyer for white white that can blink anything um well blink any creature i guess but anyhow obviously pretty fun to try to think of those kinds of ideas uh, i'm pretty hungry um <laughs> i think i'm gonna go eat something but thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Uh, it was extremely interesting magic in the end, though I thought it was going to be uninteresting. When you play against Titans, you know, it doesn't, doesn't bode well. But uh, what we got there, and pretty happy about it. So, um, yeah, it would be pretty pushed, that, that, that theoretical card design. So, yeah, if you guys aren't following, please follow. If you uh, enjoy the Soul Herder content, please consider subscribing. You can always subscribe for free if you have Amazon Prime. You can link your account with uh, with Twitch, and then you would have Twitch Prime, and you can give me a free subscription, which uh, helps me out a lot. So if you guys want to hang on for just a second, as usual, I'm going to see who else on the Card Hoarder Network is streaming, and I'll try to send some of you guys uh, that way. So it looks like um, Yama Killer uh, is streaming. I like that guy, so let me let me send you guys to Yama Killer. And you can say hello for me. Let's see, I have to type raid Yama Killer. All right, so please uh, say hello to uh, for me over there. Maybe I can get a few random people <laughs> coming and checking out some Soul Herder if you guys just spam how excited, how exciting all of our Soul Herder action is. Um, maybe I can snipe some of Yama Killer subscribers. <laughs> but yeah, until next time, I'll be back Monday with more Soul Herder. Um, have a great weekend and and hopefully i see you, all you guys on monday again um so adios